continuing the tradition. Here he goes. See you later. He's got it on the ricochet. Touchdown. Touchdown. ABC Sports. Championship Television. One, two, three, four. Welcome to the center of the college universe. Who needs hype when you have a Florida-Miami game? This is not just some rivalry. This is one-on-one -on -one combat. Brothers and sisters, I don't know what this world is coming to. In a series filled with bad blood, the Gators take on the Canes in a Sunshine State grudge match. Florida, coming up next on ABC Sports. A flyover Miami will give an extra jolt to an already amped sellout crowd in the Orange Bowl. For the 52nd time, in-state rivals get set to get together. And over 80,000 will watch it. It's our BCS Spotlight game. Presented by ADT. And two of the dominant programs in college football in the last two decades set to collide. It's number 18 Florida against the third ranked Hurricanes of Miami. Welcome to the Orange Bowl, my partner's old stomping grounds. Everybody, Brad Nessler and Bob Greasy. Grease threw a lot of touchdown passes in this old building. Tonight it's rocking already. Yeah. And it's a Miami team that came off a national championship overtime loss to Ohio State, hosting for the first time since 87, a Gator team that went 8 and 5 last year. That was Ron Zook's first season. Steve Spurrier's gone. Ron Zook comes in with two quarterbacks. Their combined stats don't add up to what Rex Grossman used to do in one game. You're exactly right. Coach Spurrier's offense is out. Rex Grossman left a year early for the NFL. But two quality quarterbacks are here. Ingo Martin did very well in his first start last week. And the phenom around Gainesville, Chris Leak, the true freshman, scored on four of seven drives last year. They're excited about this team and about this game tonight. Both teams off to a 1-0 and start. A guy who started in his hometown last week and won his first game as a Hurricane quarterback is Brock Berlin. I think everybody knows the story. He's an ex-Gator. It's an interesting situation. He started one game for the Gators. He started one game last week for the Hurricanes. Now he makes his first start in the Orange Bowl. And I think the Canes were in the uh, championship game the last Last two years the defense is good enough the offense if Brock Berlin comes through might just be good enough to get him back for a third straight year we know one thing when these two teams get together there's athletes and great players all over the field best one on the field tonight who you think <laughs> well that's a tough question <laughs> but I'd take Kellen Winslow and go and let you have the rest <laughs> they call him K2 one of his many nicknames he is the guy that obviously Brock Berlin's going to be looking for he's going to be a marked man for the Florida Gator defense can they stop him here comes Miami They've won 22 straight on their home field. Can Florida turn that around? We'll find out tonight. Right now, let's go to John and Terry in New York. Back in Miami at the Orange Bowl as we get set for number 18, Florida, and third-ranked Miami. Florida won the toss and deferred. On a hot night, 87 degrees. 67% humidity. There is a little bit of a breeze. Bob, you're down on the field before the game. Is it going to be a factor? Uh, you know, I think it's, this is a good good idea. This game is at night because it was in the afternoon. Boy, they'd be going through players like mad. But the wind will be a factor a little bit. I just hope the rain holds off. I'm looking for some, some sparkly, some uh, fireworks and some sparkles here tonight, both from the offenses and the defenses. The weather's been good to us today when it was so threatening with a hurricane over Bermuda and a tropical front that's been moving over Florida. But we haven't had any rain today. We had a lot in the last two days. That's Devin Hester. Matt Petrovich to kick off. And we're underway in Miami. Hester from the three. 
Streaks across the 30. He might be gone. Petrovic, the kicker to beat. Forget it. It's going to be a touchdown. his helmet off it'll be a penalty against Miami but the touchdown stands Hester may not know that because he is a true freshman only playing in his second game as a hurricane unsportsmanlike conduct for the removal of the headgear there's the guy that just scored in the opening 13 seconds well, I'm, I said there was going to be some fireworks on offense and defense. I forgot to add special teams as well. Hester out of Riviera Beach, Florida, has lit up the crowd. After the touchdown. The touchdown is good. As if they needed any more lighting. This is a new rule this year. Unsportsmanlike conduct in the end zone after an offensive touchdown. The defense can take the foul on the ensuing kickoff. So the Hurricanes will kick it off from their own 20. John Petty in for the extra point. Just like that. Petrovich kick was a good one. It even sailed a little bit to that corner at the three-yard line. Watch up ahead of him. The blocks that are made. Three guys, four guys getting blocks, and then the spaces. And Hester, one of the fastest guys, Larry Coker was saying this week, you don't realize how fast he is. And here comes the helmet. And as Bob said, he just doesn't know any better. Yeah. I don't think you could do that in high school either, though. Well, he wanted to make himself known to the fans at home, and he sure did right here. I said it was the kicker to beat. It was Ronaldo Hill that was the last guy to have a crack at him. But he got turned around, and Hester did as well. 97 yards, touchdown. This kid was not on the team last year. He's one of the uh, outstanding recruits that they got, the University of Miami. They got two or three freshman wide receivers. And this kid is the best of them. First Miami kickoff return for a touchdown since 1996. What a way to start our triple header on this balmy night in Dade County. Whew. I'm sweating just watching him run that far. <laughs> You're sweating anyway. Uh, now see, the Canes have to move back to the 20. Normally, you kick off from the 35. Now you go back to the 20. This almost ensures that the Gators will have good field position out of this. I think this is a good rule, Brad. Before celebration in the end zone after a touchdown by the offense. It was just, on the extra point. Yeah, you just yeah. kick it from the 17-yard line. You saw that last year Florida had all kinds of trouble with their special teams. You saw that graphic. We talked to Ron Zook about that this week and obviously in their opener last week, which was a lopsided win over San Jose State. Their special teams were great, but not so great in the opening 13 seconds here. So Florida should get good field position on their kick return. Andre Caldwell and Caldwell trying to turn the corner and he gets out in the open space all the way to the 40 the 39 yard line uh, anything you can do I can do better Caldwell is Florida's true freshman wide receiver that they have high hopes for Got a lot of young people on this field tonight so a great starting position for the Florida offense led by that guy Engel Martin as Bob said Martin will start and probably by the third series We'll see Chris Leak. There's Ingles' numbers from last week in his first career start. He's a guy that punted last year for Florida, even played wide receiver in eight games. So kind of Mr. Everything last year sitting behind Rex Grossman. Look at this down here. Tough to defense that. That trip set to the near side. And Martin keeps it on the ground inside. Nice tough run to about the 35 for Rand Carthon. Let's take a look at our Outback Steakhouse starting lineups. Here's the big fellas up front. Max Starks is kicked out from guard to left tackle. He's their best. Snell, DeGory, Butler, and a hand round out the front five. Carthon's their main guy, Troop, a great tight end. Perez and Kite start the game at wide receiver with O.J. Small, the third wide out. And you saw those three guys, and now they got five 
Good are set to go in the pattern, and Martins all alone in the Gator backfield. In a hurry. And took too much time. Get it off. It's hard to even hear the whistles, and Martin takes off, flag down. As Bob said, is. better hurry, and they didn't hurry enough. Yeah, what's going on here is the Gators are going up to the line of scrimmage in a no huddle. Dead ball, delay on the offense, five yard penalty. They went up that down. time with five receivers and a no huddle. Zombrecker then reads the coverage and signals the play in. Ed's not happy. And Ed said, I saw him on the sideline winding his arm, saying, hurry up, hurry up. So that backs him up just outside the 40-yard line. No question who's sending the signals in. Martin from the shotgun with a blitz over the middle. Completes it. Nice coverage, but a pickup of five as he got it to Kelvin Kite. Kelvin had two touchdowns last week in the win over San Jose State. Miami defensively. They lost a lot of guys that are playing on Sundays now. Here's their front four. Will Fork is the big fella inside. Carroll, Harris, and Atkins round out the front four. Linebackers rangy and good. Williams had a fumble return for a touchdown last year. Vilma's their leader. Here's the secondary. Sean Taylor, the best back there, but they're all good ones. Third down and seven Gators. Quarterback draw for Martin. He's got the first and then some. Nice call. Weaves his way to the 22. First down, Florida. I like that call. Zombrecker saw that they were matched up everywhere against man-to-man -man coverage, and nobody was left to, to cover the quarterback, to take care of the quarterback. No linebackers, no DBs, nothing. Good call. So Florida trying to work its way down, calm down the... Miami fans that were lit up in the opening seconds on the kickoff return for a touchdown and now they're threatening themselves after their good kickoff return the penalty of course helped that by where they kicked off and that's first down Florida just inside the Canes 23 here they come movement flags down might have been Randy hand who lifted his hand referee tonight is Steve Shaw and here's the call Dead ball, false start on the offense, five yard penalty, ball, first down. Ball. Larry Coker, coach of the year, two seasons ago in his rookie campaign, took the Canes to a national championship, took them to another championship game last year and lost in overtime to Ohio State. He's only tasted defeat once in 26 outings. Here's a flare out in the flat. Canes defense swarms over there. <laughs> John Vilma <laughs> led the way. Vilma found him. <laughs> That's like a long handoff to a running back, and Vilma just said, hey, I'm getting out there and make a tackle. That was not a, didn't look like a running play to me. 51, right there. Man, and he delivers a hit. So they got the five from the penalty back. Caldwell paid the price, and now it's second down and 10. Martin again taking his time up into the gun. Python off tackle, broke one, and he's going to have what looks like another first down for Florida. Sean Taylor made the stop, but Rand Carthon's got a first down. Nice run by Carthon. If you want to get at this Miami defense, and not a bad way to do it, is get him on the ground running. Last year, they were 72nd in the nation against the run and first against the pass. Five wideouts, empty backfield except Engel Martin. Trying to lead Florida to a tie here, and he runs smack dab into the teeth of Barack Atkins. <laughs> So he had a nice quarterback draw, but he paid the price for a one-yard pickup there. Watch over here. Atkins is just going to do a little swing to the inside. The little game, the two linemen twisted right into the quarterback. So it's second and nine. They can get a first down inside the two-yard line.
Hand off inside. Carthon straight up the middle. And he's inside the five. Didn't get a first down. But a nice gain. Florida's done very well under Ron Zook in the red zone. When they get down there, they've scored on 48 of 57 possessions. So this is possession number 58 upcoming. And boy, would they love to tie this ball game up and settle things down. You just give up a touchdown like that on the opening kickoff, and it takes a lot out of you. Yeah. And again, running right up the middle, inside the ends, running right at the inside tackles of the Hurricane defense. And a very important third down, so a timeout upcoming. We're not quite five minutes into the game, and we've already got Miami in front on a kickoff return for a touchdown. But Florida with a third and one coming up, and maybe a touchdown to tie it up when we come back. A huge third and one coming up for Florida. They took the time out to make sure, exactly sure what they're doing. They can get a first down inside the two. A touchdown would tie it. Smalls in motion. Martin rolls that way. He's in trouble and down he goes. D.J. Williams, the outside linebacker, with a sack. And a loss of six. Had a man open in the end zone. If he would have found him soon enough. Right here, the receiver right there is open. Got to got the ball up a little sooner. And the field goal by Matt Leach is good at 26 yards. So they got points. Not what Ron Zook wanted, but he says, okay, fellas, let's go. We're back in it. They go the length of the field and get a field goal at 7-3, Miami. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Outback Steakhouse. No rules, just right. Nissan and your Nissan dealer. SBC, ordinary people, extraordinary job. And Miller High Life, to live simply, proudly, boldly, manly. This is the High Life. It's been an exciting five and a half minutes of football as well. From the Orange Bowl, the Canes, that guy scored in the first 13 seconds of the game. And Florida's just taken it 29 yards in five minutes plus to get a field goal of 26 yards. 7-3 our score. And, and only had to go 29 yards to kick a field goal. That follows Devin Hester's celebration, the 15-yard penalty, the short field for the Gators, helped them to get three points. So the Nissan drive was a short one. 7-3 our score and a high short kick this time. <laughs> Very good. short. And kick it at the deep again. Fielded at the 17. Sean Taylor. Taylor trying to weave his way through some traffic. Still on his feet. He's got great strength. Here's Sean Taylor in the open field. And now Hill's the man to beat again. All the way to the 15-yard line. It's a kickoff return party in Miami. 67 yards. glad they didn't score because he wants to get on the field. This is the free safety, one of the best in the country. Sean Taylor was a running back and defensive back at Gulliver High School here in Miami. Scored 44 touchdowns his senior year. He knows what to do with it when he gets it under his arm. Does he ever? First down, Canes inside the Gators 15-yard line. First snap for the Hurricane offense. Berlin fires down the sideline, complete. Kellen Winslow is out of bounds. He's talking to the side judge back there, the pylon. They're going to have to replace that, and they'll bring it back to the 15. Kellen, number 81, going to run a little swing on the linebacker. Oh, I don't oh, know about boy. that. Oh, boy, I think he's in. The, the officials seem to be blocked out by Winslow. Well, I don't well, know. The left foot was in, the right foot was out. It's just a matter of which one came down first. That's exactly right. I still think the left had a little tap before the right, but here's a penalty marker. Movement on the left side. Winslow's pointing at Florida, and he looks like he might have been the guy that jumped. 
Now that's a tough call for that official when he's right there on top of you. You got to see the catch and then you got to also look down and see the feet. And you got to back up so you don't get killed. Yeah, and then you got to look around for some help. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the most important is get out of the way so you don't get run over. Exactly. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yard penalty, second down. So that backs it up to the 20 yard line. Get into the game with Enhanced TV. Play along, get up to the minute stats, vote and polls. Enhanced TV is live now at ESPN.com. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and a sold out Orange Bowl in Miami. And we have had, as Bob said, he expected sparks and fireworks. And in six minutes, we've got a 7 3 score. And the Canes are in the Florida Gator red zone again. Frank Gore is the single setback. He hasn't touched it yet tonight. He won't hear either. Or Willie. Screen pass to Gore. Got some blockers in front. Weaves his way down to the 10. Let's check in with John Saunders in New York. John. BYU against USC. Matt Leiner to quarterback replaced Carson Palmer. He looks 19 yards here to Kerry Colbert. Takes it down to the one yard line. Sets up a liner to Mike Williams. One yard touchdown pass. And USC has a lead over BYU of 7 0. Here it's Miami seven and Florida three under eight and a half minutes first quarter USC seems to have just picked up where they left off last year even without their Heisman Trophy winner third down and a short five Berlin oh, fires no. complete to Winslow trying to fight for that first down yardage did he get it I think he might have by inches if he did. Reed Fleming made the tackle the linebacker. So Bob said Kellen Winslow is the best one out there. He may have caught one. He did catch that one. And now did he get the first down? Going to be close enough to look. Well, Bob and Brad, this is Lynn. I'm standing on the floor of the sideline. Looks like he has to go halfway between the five yard line and the four yard line. I don't think it's going to be a first down. They're going to bring the sticks out and have a look. If I'm the quarterback and I've got Kellen Winslow, the first thing I want to find is how is the defense covering him? Are they are they doubling him or are they singling him? So far, he's got the run of the uh, coverage by himself, only single coverage. Swanee was right. You saw the distance needed to go for the first down, and Miami will go for the first down. An extra tight end comes in in Kevin Everett. On fourth down last season, 60%. Good call here. Momentum is on your side. Go for it. Keep the drive going. If the worst thing could happen, if you don't make it, Florida starts inside their own five-yard line. Single coverage. Quadrant Hill is the fullback. Fourth and inches. Miami. Berlin trying to draw Florida offsides, and they're not biting yet. And now he'll take a timeout. Nice job by the Gator defense to hold themselves in place. Timeout Miami, 7.29, first quarter. They've got the lead and are looking to add to it. Before the timeout, Miami tried to draw Florida off sides to get the first down on fourth and inches. They'll go for it anyway after the timeout. I, I still like the call. The, the kicker is a freshman. Both kickers for Miami are freshmen. I got my chances. Single coverage up here. It'll be Berlin with a quarterback sneak, and he's got it easily. Brock Berlin gets it first and goal for the Canes. Followed Chris Myers, one of the offensive captains, off the right guard. And it's first and goal. Big number 64 there is Butler. He's starting it, making his first start at right tackle because of injuries in that offensive line. Joe McGrath and Carlos Joseph both on that offensive line not playing tonight. Gore in the Kane backfield and Kellen Winslow's the motion there. First and goal. Gore hit in the backfield. Nice open field stop. Daryl Dixon, the captain, the senior from the secondary, makes the stop. 
Dixon, one of the leaders of this group. He missed last year with a shoulder injury. His teammates thought so much of him. They said, we got to have him on every road trip. We want him at every team meeting. We want him any place we can get him because he's a leader. And he did go to all the games last year despite the fact he didn't play. And he makes a big hit on Gore back at the six-yard line. Yeah, he was a starter a couple years ago. As you said, missed last season. Now the trips are to the left side for the Canes. And Berlin throws second down and dropped it. Kellen Winslow had it in his hands. Matt Jackson was there to rile him just a bit. But Kellen knows he probably should have had that one. Well, you, got, you got Winslow, who is 6'5", out on Ratliff, who's 5'10". You got single coverage. Now, that's not much of a route. They were looking for, we saw him work this in the practice the other day. He was looking for a bump and run. Ratliff had no, no part of that. He'd been better off if he, he just wanted him to throw it out there and Win, Winslow was just going to position himself. So now it's third down and goal. Three wide out group again for Berlin. They're going to blitz him. Quick drop, the throws a slant, it's incomplete. Nice coverage. Johnny Lamar had inside coverage on the intended receiver, and it's going to be a field goal try coming up now the for the game. The strength of defense for the Gators is that secondary. They lost their front seven, all defensive linebackers, all the, all the defensive linemen, but the, the DBs are pretty good. So the Gator fans are happy that their defense slows down the Canes, and John Petty comes in to try a field goal. Petty missed his first one of 42 yards last week and then hit from 23 and 32. This is a 22-yard attempt, but before it, we're going to have a flag. This is not an easy angle on the right hash mark for a right-footed kicker. And it's going to be a 27-yard field goal attempt shortly. Dead ball, false start on the offense, five-yard penalty. Yeah, I think moving the down. back five yards makes it easier. I was going to say, you were talking about the angle. This should help it. Joel Rodriguez, number 70, is the guy that came out of his stance a little bit there on the left side. You know, the two kickers for Larry Coker graduated. They had both been three-year starters. Never had to worry about that facet yeah, of the game. Yeah, they had that taken care of. Patty from 27. And he's got it right down the middle. So another great kick return. This one by Sean Taylor for the Canes. But Miami's defense, Ron Zook's group, tightens up, forces a field goal. Miami's field goal makes it a touchdown difference. 10-3 here with 6.08 remaining first quarter. Let's check out elsewhere what's going on as we head to Times Square Stadium in New York. Here's John. Well, you guys have two of the powers out of the state of Florida. Here is the third. Florida State against Maryland. Greg Jones, how is that knee? Looks like it's holding up pretty well. Big guy rumbles and shows the speed at 250 pounds to the end zone. 44 yards in the touchdown run. Florida State grabs their first lead of the game, 14-10. Good to see Greg back and healthy. Yes. That's a good game going on in the ACC here. It's Big East and SEC. Miami soon to be an ACC member starting next year. A lot of Gator fans here. And on the other side are Gator haters. The Hurricane fans. A packed house at the Orange Bowl. Miami, as Bob said, every time they touch it, whether it's offense, defense, or special teams, they look to score. And last week, they did just that. This is the first time Antrell Rolls ever touched it as a punt returner, and he goes 66 yards for a score. And D.J. Williams scooped up a fumble. I mentioned that when we did the lineups. He went 78 yards. And then the interception by Antrell Roll and a 30-yard interception return for a touchdown. Here's the kick to the eight-yard line to Andre Caldwell. Boy, he took a pop as he got to the 20. Darrell Weaver made the stop on the special team. So now Florida goes back to work trailing again by seven. And it'll be Ingle Martin still at quarterback as we anticipated. He'd play the first two series, and then the true freshman Chris Leak would come in as the signal caller. Coming up, the Valvoline Halftime Show, John and Terry. We'll have scores and highlights from around the country. Those two guys put in a long day. Long day. Part of our triple header. Martin 
from the shotgun. And the draw play inside Carthon. Trying to outrun John Vilma and does. Carthon's got good speed and he's got a first down. Rand's a guy that sat behind some pretty good backs at Florida and just bided his time and waited and waited and kept working. And now he's a senior and he's the man. Exactly. And everything's going up the middle, running wise, for the Gators. It's going to be a draw play right up the step inside here. Push the just outruns to the sideline, Vilma. But everything's starting inside. They don't want to run anything wide against these uh, Hurricanes. Now they've got good field position to work. 34-yard line. A handoff again. This time it's Deshaun Wynn. And Wynn got about five before Orion Harris brought him down. Wynn got his feet wet last week in the win over San Jose State. Had six carries last week. And gets his first touch tonight. Good for five yards. Second down and a long five upcoming. 520 remaining first quarter. And again, Martin has worked a good portion of this quarter from the shotgun. Carthon weaving his way again. First down, Florida. John Vilma made the stop. Carthon having a good first quarter, Grease. He is, and everything is inside. Look at look at Florida. They're not back in a huddle. They are lining up at the line of scrimmage. The official hasn't even marked it ready for play yet. They're using a spread offense, two receivers at the top and bottom. Now Martin, Martin looks across, finds out what play Ed Zombracker. Right now he's looking over there, wants the call. Takes his time. He's just taking his time. Now to Gorey. Calling signals from his center spot. Yep. And it's the quarterback draw again. Martin broke one tackle and dives to midfield. Martin's not afraid to mix it up. Like I said, he played a lot of different positions last year. Stuck his nose in there as a wide receiver. Caught a couple of passes last year. Punted most of the season for Florida. The, game, the only game he didn't play in was the Miami game a year ago, and that was a shellacking at the Swamp, 41-16. Gators would like to pay Miami back for that tonight. Martin now rolls to throw. Wide Down out. the sideline, wide open. Carlos Perez, touchdown. 50 yards. Florida, an extra point away from tying it up. about to tie it. The way you beat Miami is run inside between the ends and throw deep on their corners. Florida has just got that recipe down to a down to a to a perfection tonight. Extra point is good. We're deadlocked at 10. Some confusion obviously in that Kane secondary box because Perez was all by his lonesome. This is Jennings on the outside. He's got help with from Sykes right there. Sykes blows the coverage. He just comes up. He's supposed to have the deep outside. And Bob, I think what happened is Sykes took a peek inside, saw the quarterback scrambling to the outside, thought he was going to make the move, and then he just went right by him, yeah. left his position. And Randy Shannon has talked to his team a lot this year about staying in your position, not blowing the coverage, trying to make an individual play. Perez, a career-long reception of 50 yards for the touchdown. And that's a happy offensive coordinator right there. As you saw, Ed Zondrecker going up and down the line there. His eighth career touchdown for Carlos. And what they're not doing, they're not sitting in the pocket and allowing Miami to put pressure on the quarterback because they can rush the quarterback. That time, they knew it was going to be a pass, so he got him outside the pocket. They broke the coverage. Perez got down the sideline. Martin put it on the money. So now we're even at 10. And Florida, Matt Petrovich set to kick. The kickoff returns have been unbelievable. 97 yards for a touchdown for Hester to open the game, and then 67 for Sean Taylor the second time on a high short kick. This one is that same high short kick to the 20, and somebody called fair catch. And so that's where Miami will start right there. 
Next Saturday, we've got another terrific college football regional triple header for you. At noon Eastern, you'll see defending champ, national champ Ohio State against NC State or Arkansas and Texas. Then at 3.30, Notre Dame takes on Michigan in the big house. And at 8, you can catch Penn State, Nebraska, Georgia Tech, Florida State, or Illinois, UCLA. Check your local listings for the games in your area. A lot of surprises today. A lot of shocks around college football in this early part of the season. Florida would like to join that group and knock off third-ranked Miami, and they're off to a good start, even at 10 apiece. There's Don Solinger. He is the special teams coach. He's got to be pretty pleased with his guys. Just inside the 21 is where the Canes will work this time. Play action on a bootleg. Look out! Berlin just got leveled from behind by Ray McDonald. McDonald off to a great start in his young Gator career. That's his second sack of the season. Four minutes left in the first quarter. There have been so many fireworks, we haven't had a chance to take a look <laughs> at our Outback Steakhouse starting lineups for the Canes. And here's how it looks. The big fellas up front, Winston at left tackle, former tight end Kerry Rodriguez, Myers, and Butler up front. Frank Gore, the starting tailback, the fullback is Hill, Winslow, the tight end, Beard, and Moore, two of the many wide receivers they'll use tonight. It's second down and 16, and now flags down. Let's see if Ray McDonald was offside. He'd give the <laughs> yardage back he got from the sack a minute ago if he Good was. Offside on the defense, contact. That's a big headache for the center when the defensive nose tackle jumps off sides defensively on that front you've seen a lot of McDonald already with Parker and Lee and Harris the linebacking core for Florida McCullough Reed Fleming Matt Ferrier and the secondary as Bob said probably the strength of the team Lamar Scott Dixon and Kewan Ratliff so now it's second down and 11 at the 20 beard in motion the give is to Gore and Frank Gore Goes for about six or seven. Run down by Darrell Lee. Frank Gore, of course, a uh, great story in that the injury kept him out last year. And a lot of people say, would first-round draft choice Willis McGahee, the All-American, even seen the field if this guy would have stayed healthy? Well, Gore had a great freshman year two years ago and then got hurt in the spring, and we'll never know. Uh, but they had Gore coming back and McGahee coming back. And when Gore went down, Willis just said, hey, I'm the man, and he made the most of it. Did he ever? Right now on the physically unable to perform list for the Buffalo Bills, but their number one draft choice. And a heck of a back he was last year before getting hurt in the championship game. Third down and four. Berlin from the shotgun. Here comes the pressure. He got rid of it. Complete, but it's short of the first down. Roscoe Parrish made the catch. But again, Johnny Lamar was Johnny on the spot. Fourth down. Winslow right there is going to be open as he breaks to the outside. Berlin elects to go for the first down and the sure catch. Have to punt it away. And Brian Monroe is a freshman punter. Trying to keep those hands dry on his hips right now as he'll take the snap inside his own 15. Flags are down as he gets off a wobbly kick. It tails to the far side. It'll be fielded at the 29 on one hop by Kiwan Ratliff, who's a dangerous return man. But again, a penalty marker at the line of scrimmage. So let's see what that's about. Legal procedure against the Canes. They'll wave that off and take the ball where it is. Yeah, they got good field position. And while we wait for that decision, we'll have a program reminder for you. What if Romeo's dad owned a bar and Juliet's dad had a husband? Sounds like somebody <laughs> needs a beer in there. Two clashing cultures become one big happy family. It's all relative. It's a new comedy coming out Wednesday, October 1st at 8.30, 7.30 Central on ABC. So, with good field position, as we expected in the third series, here's the freshman, Chris Leak. Rolls to his left, throws on the run, and zaps it out there, complete. A first down throw on his first toss of the night to Andre Caldwell. So freshman to freshman, and yes. you might hear those two guys hooking up a lot in the next three or four years. 
High school player of the year, 185 career touchdown passes in high school. Yeah. Played very well last week. In fact, he scored on four of the first seven drives he was in there. And again, the offensive game plan for the Gators, don't stay in the pocket and throw. Get outside or run inside. And just a little short of the first down. They didn't get 10, they got about nine and a half. And on second down in short yardage, Steve Shaw stops play. Reset the 25 second clock. The 25 second clock did not start. Meanwhile, the game clock has less than a minute in this first quarter, and it has been everything we expected and then some. Second down, less than a yard. Chris Leak in the shotgun. Set to throw and fires one. Should have been caught. Dallas Baker had it and dropped it. And Baker might have been off to the races had he been able to hold on to that. And that's third and one. So he's got a hurry up, hurry up play here. Take a look at this one. Should have been caught. Right through his arms. On third down, Carthon. First down run for the Gators. Another tough run by Rand Carthon. First down, Florida. Florida doing a nice job of mixing up the tempo of the game. Some of the, they're never huddle, huddling. They're always at the line of scrimmage. Sometimes they take their time and run the clock down to two or three seconds. Other times, like right then, they hurry up, line at the line of scrimmage, and run a play. Zombrecker, the offensive coordinator, oftentimes will look at the defense, signal out to the quarterback, and call the play, and then let him go. Seatrick face it is the tailback now. Play action to him, and the throw out in the flat, kind of a dangerous toss intended for his tight end, Ben Troop, who couldn't handle it. Sean Taylor was out there in coverage for Miami. Brad and Bob Carthon's coming back into the ball game, and as we watch him get under the field and get ready for this next play, he is an important key to this ball game. Everyone understands that to have any success against this Miami defense, you have to run the ball. But prior to this game, the most he'd ever carried the ball in one game was 14 times. Minuscule when you need a great running back. Yeah, good point, Swanley. And Randy Shannon, defensive coordinator for the Canes, says, I think you'll carry it at least 18 tonight. He's off to a good start here as he's over 50 yards in the first quarter. Rand Carthon. And we've got an injured Florida player. Looks like Tavares Washington, their big tackle, and it is. A junior. Junior college player just came in this year. Started the first ball game, but didn't start today as uh, Max Starks moved out from guard to tackle. Now this, this is not good for Florida. Miami has not had to have a lot of yards per play because of their kickoff returns. Meanwhile, Florida is just chomping away at 7.4 per. <laughs> if you if you would throw the return yards in there from from special right. teams, Miami would have a lot. But as it is offensively, they only have 16 yards. The rest was done on the kick return. So the attention now turns to the big fella, it's a 300 pounder out of Greenville, Mississippi. Well, both teams scored on their first two possessions, and then Miami just punted it away on their last one. <laughs> you and I were talking last night. We said, wouldn't it be fun to get in one of those 38, 36 type things? <laughs> we're kind of on pace right uh -huh. now. Uh -huh. Hester's the guy that scored the opening touchdown, 97-yard kick return. If you just joined us, that's how the game opened up. Let's take a look at the replay, see if we can see where Washington's injured. Oh boy, yeah, he got rolled up on. You know, that, that happens to a lot of offensive linemen. If you leave your feet, if you don't have happy feet and keep your feet underneath you, if you can't get, get them spread out somewhere, you get a lot of heavy bodies falling all around you. You can see he's got not a brace, but a sleeve on that particular knee. It doesn't look like it's a knee brace, though, which would have helped the cause a little bit on that. And Most offensive linemen these days do wear yeah. knee braces on both knees. Bob and Brad, just for your information, uh, the floor of the team does not give out injury information during the course of this ballgame. But we'll just keep an eye on them, see what they do to him, see if he can come back into the ballgame. All right, Swanee. At the 38, crowd coming to life. Third down at 10. 
The freshman quarterback, Chris Leak, in trouble. On the run, weaving his way through traffic, but down he goes. John Square squared off and dropped him. <laughs> and it's fourth down. Chris said, in high school, I could outrun those defensive linemen. <laughs> That's the end of the first quarter, and a good one it was. Miami struck early, Florida battled back. The end of one at the Orange Bowl. The Hurricanes 10, the Gators 10. Florida and Miami tied at 10 as we're set to start the second quarter. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan with you from the Orange Bowl. Fourth down at 11 for the Gators. Eric Wilbur set to punt and Roscoe Parrish back deep for the Canes. Wilbur of freshman. Long wait on the snap. Well, he may go ahead and back him up. Yep. Give him a little better angle to try to drop one in the corner. So they back the line of scrimmage up to the 45. Five yard penalty, fourth down. Actually put it down on the 44. Roscoe Parrish, he's a guy that can take it coast to coast in a hurry too. They want to keep it out of his hands if at all possible. I don't think they'll kick to him. Wilbur just trying to knock it to the corner. Let's see where it goes. Out of the back of the end zone. So they'll bring it out to the 20 and we'll bring it out to Times Square Stadium and John Saunders. John. USC off to another great start tonight, Brad, against BYU. Matt Berry back to pass. He's picked off by Omar Mazel. 20 yards. He goes for the touchdown in a 21 to nothing lead. Meanwhile, Oklahoma's leading Alabama only 6 3. Total offense, as we told you, Miami only 16 yards. Doesn't include the kickoff returns that led to their 10 points. That total there does. That does not, yeah. There it is. Yeah, that's it. Now they work from the 20. Parrish is the motion man. He gets it. Uh, the fake as up the middle is Frank Gore. Channing Crowder was the guy that met him. They really like Crowder. He's a true freshman and the son of Randy Crowder, who was a defensive lineman for so many years with the Miami Dolphins. He didn't start tonight, but he was in on the second play. Suspended last week, he and uh, Charles, the other linebacker. But he's catching up tonight. Frank Gore has only four yards on three carries so far tonight. Brock Berlin has plenty of time across the middle and on the run is Kevin Beard and Beard spins to a first down. Kewan Ratliff made the stop but a 12 yard pickup to Beard. Beard uh, coming back from an injury had an ACL at the end of last year played 10 games back and Larry Coker saying the other day we need this guy he is one of our true leaders. So first down at the 32. Beard and Parrish remain the two wideouts. Hill, the fullback now, gets in front of Gore. Pump fake by Berlin, wanted to go deep and hammered from behind again. And Florida taking it, but the play has been whistled dead. And Channing Crowder is making Brock Berlin look like chowder right now. Number 55. Right in front of you, Chowder. Crowder does a nice job of avoiding the block of Winston. Winston tried to throw a little cross body block. Brock did a good job of just getting his arm going forward, or that would have been a fumble. Well, but Winston, the uh, left tackle, was a tight end last year, converted to tackle, and has been doing really well. Second down at 10. And it's Gore trying to cut outside. Frank gets across the 35 to the 36. Got about four. Gus Scott hit him low, knocked him off his feet. 13 and a half minutes to go in the first half. Sold out Orange Bowl in Miami for the 18th ranked Gators and the third ranked Hurricanes. And this one started with a bang, a 97 yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Opened things up. 
Florida came back, got a field goal, so did the Canes, and then Florida tied it on a touchdown pass as Carlos Perez was wide open, a 50-yarder from Engel Martin. And now the Canes trying to battle back to find the lead again here in the second quarter. Third down and six. Laycock winding down on Brock Berlin. Is he going to get it off? Just in time. Over the middle. Roscoe Parrish, I don't think his knee ever touched. Somehow he kept his balance, and he might have gotten a first down. He got hit, did a cartwheel, and I don't think his knee ever touched. He put his hand down and somehow kept his balance. You're right. And it is a first down. Unbelievable balance. Be coming from the left side, Roscoe Parrish. Pretty much everybody on the field figures he's going to be down after this hit, What's except this? Roscoe. Wow. That's some uh, acrobats right there. Boy, that's something. First down on a great effort by Parrish at the 43. Back to the ground game. Trying to get something going on the ground as Gore, and he only got two, maybe three. Johnny Lamar made the stop. It's not easy sledding right now, the rushing attack for Miami. There's Winston, number 74. He was a backup tight end as a true freshman last year. He's well, bulked up, hasn't he? He has. He's <laughs> over 300 pounds. A lot of schools wanted him to play offensive line, and he says, no, I won't play tight end. After the first year, he says, hey, can I move to tight end? I come from tight end to offensive line. He says, yeah. He said, well, go gain some weight. He says, good, I get to eat. Yeah, he did, up to about 307. Here's a flare pass. That might be a lateral. Florida's thinking so, scooped up. He won right left. Touchdown, Florida. The ball is thrown backwards. It's a lateral. Ratliff all over that intended pass for Gore. Florida takes its first lead of the night. And the Hurricane fans are shocked by that one. Trying a two-point conversion attempt. It's incomplete. Reed Fleming snuck out there, but flags are down on the play as well. Sean Morton, the holder, is the guy that had the pass attempts. Illegal formation, six men on the line of scrimmage on the offense. Penalty has declined. The point is no good. And so they don't get the extra, nor do they get the two. And Coach Zook talking to Morton, the guy that tried the pass. So it's six points on the fumble recovery by Kiwan Ratliff for a touchdown. Gators in front. Let's take another look at that pass. I don't think there's any doubt it was a lateral ball. I don't either. Watch, watch where Berlin throws the ball from. Right there. And it lands a lands yard behind. Two yard door. stripes yeah. back from the uh, solid line. The, uh, and then the defense, in practice, in games, you see this all the time. They always scoop it up as if it is. And they say, and the coaches say, go ahead and run. We'll yep. call you back if it's not. And Kiwan Ratliff, who's the only guy in college football last year that had a touchdown reception and an interception return for a touchdown, now adds a fumble return for a score to his Gator resume. And, and the Gators had two interceptions for touchdowns last week. Now the defense scores again. Short kick again, Sean Taylor again from the 16. Trying to break free, and they're not going to let him go anywhere this time. And the Gators have tightened up since the opening two kickoff yeah, returns. They're, they're not kicking anything deep on timing anymore. Kick it as high as they can and either force the fair catch or let their return group get down there and cover it. What it does, it messes up the timing of the return. You kick it high and to the side. That lets all of your, def your, your defenders that are going downfield know I'm going to kick it high and to the right. So everybody go to the right. Rock Berlin, let's see if he's shaken now by what just occurred against his ex-teammates from Gainesville. Well, I thought he was rattled a little bit because he threw that ball to Gore a little bit quicker. And remember, Crowder let him have it a couple of times on the last series. They haven't gone to Kellen Winslow since the first drive of the night. He caught three of the first five passes that Berlin threw. Here's Gore finally getting some open space, and Frank Gore down the sideline and all the way out. 
out near midfield. Yeah, I don't think Frank Gore has really gotten in the groove yet this year. He laid out a year, played one game, got over 115 yards, but that run right there looked like the Frank Gore of a couple of years ago. He just ripped off 30. Yep. He just makes it look so easy. Gore with great speed once he gets that corner. And there's the move. Oh, boy. That's a nice move he put on Daryl Dixon. Yeah, Dixon almost hurt himself. <laughs> <laughs> to the midfield stripe, first down, Canes. Now off play action. Who's Berlin want? Deep middle. Got him, Roscoe Parrish, but oh, he couldn't hold it. Play. Beautiful Dixon. throw. And Dixon again, who was juked out by Gore, this time makes a play. Yeah, Dixon comes back and makes amends quickly. Good play offense. Good pitch and catch. Now Dixon's going to catch the ball. Right there. Just comes it, just knocks it out. Perfectly Parrish, timed. Parrish catches it, doesn't have it long. Dixon knocks it out. Couldn't time it any better for receiver, quarterback, throw. Just a nice play by number 34. Second down and 10. Two tight ends set now for the Canes. Berlin goes to his safety valve Gore and Gore put the ball on the ground and I think it's, it's been whistled dead no maybe not no, no. Daryl Dixon's off to the races for Florida I thought I heard a whistle on that one I guess not and Dixon who made a great play on the previous snap scoops up the fumble and goes 34 yards there's the throw to Gore. Now he's trying to get some extra yardage. Comes out. Yeah, it's, oh, it's that's out. It's out before he, but Dixon, I think, is kneeling down when he picks it up, which means he would have been down right there. He forced the fumble and recovered it and ran it back 34 yards by number 34. Not a bad play. Not bad for Mr. Dixon. Nixon. Martin back in there, quick slant, and now the intended receiver can't hold on to that one either. Penalty markers down as Calvin Kite can't hold the ball. Boy, some Gator fireworks here by their defense. Exactly. The defense is setting the tone for the offense. Let's go back one more time and check out number 34, who makes the hit that strips the ball right there. Yeah. Now yeah, he's, he's on the down. Ground. Yeah, he's, he's on down. the ground. So the ball should have been marked dead there and given to the, the Gators. Spot, repeat first down. So the turnover story. Miami's had a couple just in the last couple minutes, and Florida trying to take advantage of another. They did on the first one, scooped up by Ratliff. They missed their two-point conversion, so they lead by six, and now they got a first down. And 25. It is not first and 15, as you see right there. It's first and 25. And it's Engel Martin throwing incomplete. Intended for O.J. Small, and he got a little bit too far out in front of him. Coming up on Monday night, Al Michaels, John Madden, and Lisa Guerrero will be in Philadelphia for a rematch of last year's NFC Championship game. Warren Sapp will lead the Super Bowl champion Bucks against Donovan McNabb and the Eagles. Monday night, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, right here on ABC. Big game coming up Monday night. Big one. that would be a good one. Martin trying to throw a screen up in the air, almost intercepted. Alfonso Marshall had his hands on it, and he dropped it. Let's go down to Lynn Swan. Thank you, Brad. Speaking of big ones, Monday night game, here's the big man, Warren Sapp. Warren, what do you have in plan for those? What do you have in store for the Eagles? Third down. Well, we're just going to come out and give America a great show. It's going to be on ABC, and everybody gets to watch. You know, last year you guys played the whole season. You know, everybody saw what well, a great team you were. You were hardly on national TV games. Now you open up the season on Monday night. It's the biggest show on the earth, and got two of the best teams in America going at it, and it should be a great show. Let's do our Super Bowl bump. There we go. <laughs> They both got rings down there, and flags are down. I'll tell you what, that guy, it's not fair for that guy to be a defensive lineman. Not only is he big, but he is smart, and he is fast. There it is. 
He showed me that at an NBA game this year. That thing would be a bracelet for me. Look at there we go. They're comparing rings. I think Warren's got Swanies in size and maybe diamonds. I'm not sure. <laughs> By about five carats, there maybe. You go. <laughs> bling bling. Yeah, his, for Warren. his ring is a trophy. Mine is a ring. His is a trophy. Uh, I remember seeing Warren Sapp. I think when he was a sophomore at the University of Miami, he had been a tight end his freshman year. They moved him to defensive line. He was running 100-yard sprints with the defense. He was beating everybody, the defensive backs. In the last 20 yards, he turned around and ran them backwards. Pretty light on his feet for his size, that's for sure. Martin wide open across the middle. Andre Caldwell, the hit put on it by Antrell Roll. So still long yardage coming up with less than 10 minutes remaining in the half. Florida leading on a defensive play. Kiwan Ratliff's fumble return for a touchdown has him in front 16 to 10. So fourth down and 23. They're going to try a field goal, I guess. I don't know if Matt Leach has this much leg. Well, or, or you got a good gimmick that you could run right here. This would be a 52-yard attempt, but it's going to be a quick kick instead. He'll try to pooch it to the corner. Oh, and he almost got it. Bounced at the one, but into the end zone. And they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. So the Canes will be back on offense, trying to regroup after having the early lead. But the Gators have snatched it from a 16-10 Florida. Back at the Orange Bowl, you're watching the BCS Spotlight game presented by ADT. Florida shocking some people right now by leading third-ranked Miami 16 to 10. 918 to go in the half. They don't lose too often in this building, do they? 22 straight they've won here. And this is the Gators' first trip into the Orange Bowl since 87. It's the 52nd time these two teams have gotten together. And Miami leads the series by just one game. Berlin off play action. Brock fires it out. Nice catch. Sliding down is Kevin Beard. Going to be about two feet short of a first down. Right now, here's our Pontiac high performance drive summary. Not a lot of driving. Yeah, this I don't like. No. The last two possessions for the Hurricanes both had fumbles. That's Tur like having an emergency break on your Pontiac right yeah, there. You turn that over. The Gators have had two possessions inside Miami's territory and only scored three points. And of course, if you're just joining us and you're wondering where in the heck the 10 points came from, then it was two long kickoff returns, one for a touchdown and one that set up a field goal. Now the ground game is starting to work a little bit, though, for Miami as Frank Gore takes it out to about the 38 yard line. Remember Tavares Washington who injured that knee as he was rolled up on that play and now on the bike trying to warm it up. Hopefully the big fellow will be able to return. First down run by Gore, first and 10, 820 remaining in the second quarter. Hill, the fullback in movement in the backfield but it's Gore again and Gore again gashes the Gators secondary all the way to the 41 yard line such good running and blocking up front he only needs a little gap penalty marker down at the midfield stripe see if there was an illegal block after he got out there I don't know what the call it's a strange spot for a penalty marker unless there was a clip in there someplace Illegal block in the back on the offense. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. And that is the call. That was obviously not at the point of attack, but downfield near right. the end of the run. Bob and Brad, prior to this ball game, there was a lot of conversation coming out of the University of Florida about Frank Gore not being all that. They were talking about McGahee was the man that that Gore wasn't good as, as good as McGahee. And I think he comes in this ball game saying, let me just play my game. Let me show you what I can do. And he intends on disproving a lot of those comments they made during the week. That's right. That was a 13 yard gain, but a 10 yard penalty. So it's first and seven. 
And number seven rifles it out to Hill, a fullback. Ooh. Head on hit by Keewan Ratliff. That'll rattle your brains a little bit. But he got 13 in the first down. And that's why Quadrant Hill is in there playing. He's not the physically most gifted player probably on the Canes well, he, roster. He's a fullback. He's only 216 pounds. Most fullbacks in college weigh 240 or 250, and you're a blocker. Quad is, is in there because he never blows an assignment. He's very smart. He knows who to block. And he can catch it. And he can catch the football. And he got a first down at the 46-yard line. Gore, the single setback, two tight ends in for the Canes on first down. Throw intended for Kevin Beard way behind him. Yeah, I think, I, I think Brock Berlin is a little bit off. He's been throwing. That time he threw the ball way too quickly. The receiver wasn't anywhere near it. The, the, the completion before, about three or four, Beard was running a, a curl, and he threw it to the outside. It's definitely a quick pass, three-step drop. Beard was just, just not ready for the football. So second down and 10. Seven minutes and change remaining in the half. 16-10 Florida. Draw play. Gore weaving his way. And got about five more down to the 41-yard line. You know, we've been at Miami practices, you and Swanley and I, during the Ken Dorsey era of 38 wins and only two losses in a career, we've gone to practice where we never saw the ball hit the ground. Right. And the other day, there was a few balls hitting the ground. Right. Quad Hill is shaken up, and he's pointing at his left shoulder area. And the trainers come out to have a look. Well, brother, I think, you know, you look back at just last year, they had one of the best receivers in the country in Andre Johnson. And you don't replace a guy like Andre Johnson easily. They've got a number of guys who have, right at this point, what I refer to as potential. Somebody wanted to tell me that, you know, young Moore is the future. He is, he is one of the future greats. But I told him, I said, no, you don't go from potential to future to being great. What you do is you come out here, you have the potential, you get an opportunity, you take advantage of it, and then you become the now receiver. That's the one they're hoping becomes their now receiver. We got a timeout with 647 remaining in the first half. Florida leading by six. Quatrin Hill heading to the Miami locker room a little bit before halftime. Shaken up on that last play. Had the look of a stinger as he was trying to shake his shoulder off as he came to the sideline. But we'll try to get a report. It's third down and five. Probably the most important third down so now, far of the ballgame for play Miami. Here. Big play. Winslow is wide to the right side. The rest of the receivers to the left. And again, it's Winston who comes out of his crouch a bit too early. And it'll force a third down and nine coming up. Dead ball, false start on the offense, five yard penalty, third down. Seems to me that Winston's getting a little jumpy over there because of what Crowder did on a couple of plays in some previous series. And he knows Florida's coming around that corner, and they've let Brock Berlin have it in the back a couple of times. And Eric's just a little jumpy over there. Third down and nine. Now Berlin directing traffic and he'll work from the shotgun. Pressure's coming. Berlin steps up, fires, and Beard in and out of his hands. Should have had it. And again, some pressure was coming on Berlin, but he delivered a strike. They just didn't hold it. That's, that's good, good playing right there. Good defense, good offense. Good throw. You got to make the play. Right through his hands. Yeah. So a punting situation for Miami. Apologize to Brock um, for that comment a little earlier. Maybe Beard's having the bad night. That could be. Monroe's punt. Bounces inside the 10. They can't quite get to it. Trying to get down there and down it. And Florida now will come out to the 20-yard line. With five minutes and 44 seconds remaining in the half. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Pontiac. Official performance machines of the NCAA. Circuit City, we're with you. Pacific Life offering insurance, annuities, and investments. And new Tostitos Gold, the perfect chip for hearty dips. When you've got Tostitos, you got a party. It's always a party in Miami. 
Brad Nestle, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and about 80,000 of our friends partying at the Orange Bowl. Where the Gators lead third ranked Miami 16 to 10. Engel Martin remains the Gator quarterback. Carthon bouncing off would be tacklers before Sean Taylor finally wraps him up. And Rand got about four. And if Carthon, the name rings a bell and you don't know Florida football, his dad, Maurice, now the offensive coordinator for the Dallas Cowboys with Bill Parcells. But of course, he was a heck of a player on those two New York Giants Super Bowl championship teams, one in the 80s, one in the 90s. Quick pass out to O.J. Small. And O.J. spins his way out to about the 27-yard line. This is the fifth possession for the Gators and the fourth possession for Ingo Martin. Leak took the uh, Chris Leak, the uh, freshman quarterback, took the third possession. And I think it's I think this is right. I think Ingle has a better feel of what's going on in this game. It's a tough place to come in and play as a true freshman. Big third down and three here for the Kings defense trying to get the ball back for their offense and they might. Martin running for his life throws on the run and incomplete. Thomas Carroll was the guy giving chase and Engel was running for his life. They did a nice job of avoiding a negative play and keeping it alive but the Canes were all over the receivers. Well they forced the punt. It's Ed Zonbrecher right there the offensive coordinator. Does a nice job. Remember Eric Wilbur is a freshman punter and that's Roscoe Parrish. This time he's got a kick to him. Parrish waiting on it. Late fair catch. Nice job by the gunner down there to force the fair catch after a 44 yard kick. Four minutes and 24 seconds second quarter of the Orange Bowl. Gators still in front. Florida 16, Miami 10, 424 remaining in the half. And the Canes with a first down at their own 29-yard line. Really, the kick returns have been the saving grace, or Miami might be out of this game completely. They're very much in it, but Florida leads by six. Berlin pump fakes. Stop and go down the sideline, almost intercepted. It was more the intended receiver, <laughs> and Johnny Lamar is having a good game he on that is. corner. We saw him in practice the other day, working on all this stop and go a lot in practice. And Ryan Moore, 85, turns into the defensive back and just try to keep it from being intercepted. Here it is up here. A little stop and go. Lamar does a nice job. Moore just says, you ain't catching that ball. Yeah, Moore did a better job of defense almost than Lamar did. Yeah. Johnny looked like the intended receiver. Brock Berlin is 8 of 16 throwing so far. Gore bounces through a hole. Boy, it's a good thing Matt Ferrier held on, or he might have ripped off a long one. He got six yards. Gore does such a nice job in traffic in, in small areas of, of not going down with the first guy. Or making another guy in the in in the in the in the confusion miss the tackle. He averaged over nine yards a carry in that freshman year that Bob talked about earlier, and he's over seven yards a pop in this first half now. As Frank Gore starting to get it in gear, but the Canes need four yards on third down to keep the drive alive and try to keep scoring hopes alive here late in the second quarter. Gore hitting the backfield, broke that tackle. But he couldn't break away from the second. Dwight Jackson's the guy that got the penetration. Then Eric Holcomb held on to his ankle to bring him down. Coming up on the Valvoline Halftime Show, John Saunders and Terry Bowden will be at Times Square Stadium. John and Terry will have all the scores and highlights from around the country. A lot of interesting games today. Some upsets. Some great games still going on with 
Florida State and Maryland and Oklahoma and Alabama. And of course, this 52nd meeting between the Canes and the Gators. Three minutes left in the quarter. Off the side of Brian Monroe's foot, a terrible punt. There's a flag down. I don't know if he was blocked or what. It looked like he almost missed it. Well, like you said, this, he's a true freshman kicking in only his second game. Again, a penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage. And Ron Zirk already knows it's against the Canes. He says, hey, decline. Formation, six men on the line on the kicking team. That penalty is declined. He just shakes it. Yeah. It's a five-yard punt. People don't understand the importance of special teams and the importance of kickers. We mentioned Miami the last two years. Their kickers, Capshaw and Seavers, had been here for three years and were kicking for three years. That is a lot of worry off the mind of a head coach. And now you see his teammates trying to rally around Monroe. Well, he's a great kicker. I mean, high school, he just, he's going to be good. He just, in this arena, you've you just need some experience. It's Leak back in at quarterback, an already confident Gator team with a six-point lead in great field position. On the ground is Carthon, and he goes to the 35. So plenty of time for Florida right now, and they stay with their rotation. Martin a couple of series, bring in Leak, even though it's late in the second quarter. They think he can carry them down, maybe get three more, maybe seven. Who knows? Ron Zirk was telling me before the game on the field, he says, you know, this is the best way for us to go right now. But eventually, he says, I, I want to get out of this. I want somebody to take over. Inside the 30 is win this time. Hand lost his hat in the battle. Well, this is close to a first down. They might. We've had. They're going to bring the sticks out. We've had a lot of excitement, a lot of uh, fireworks, but really haven't been generated a lot by the offenses. The one pass, the long pass to Perez, that was a nice play. But with Grossman being out of here, a three-year starter, he'd started 33 games. And Ken Dorsey not being here, he'd started 40 games. The quarterback play is not what we've seen in the past. That's Let's right. Put it that way. Well, our yellow line doesn't lie. Our first down line is true to form, and it's a little over the length of the football short of the first down. And Ingo Martin says, heck, when Rex was a sophomore, you know, he didn't, you know, he made mistakes too. And, and, and that's true. Yeah, it's growing pains. You, you know, you have to start way back. All right. You, you love having Grossman or Dorsey throwing the ball and never having it touch the ground. But you have those for three years and you got to go back and train someone else. Deshaun Wynn stays in there behind Leak. Third down, less than one. Leak trying to do it himself, but boy, is he met in the hole. John Vilma and Vince Wolfork were there to meet him, and I don't think so. I think he lost yardage. Watch this hit in the hole. Wilfork is the big guy underneath, and there comes Vilma. Vilma, a great hitter, a great player. And, you know, he, he doesn't look big enough to be a middle linebacker. Yeah, fourth down is coming up with 134. And with this timeout, we've got a chance to look at our Pacific Life game summary so far in the ball game. Opening 13 seconds. How about Devin Hester? 97 yards for a touchdown to open the ball game. Seven nothing at that point. Then Ingo Martin comes back, finds Carlos Perez wide open, blown coverage, 50 yard touchdown. Then Brock Berlin throwing to Gore. It's a lateral. Kiwan Ratliff says, I'm taking this baby to the barn. And he goes in for the touchdown. They missed the two point conversion attempt. Field goals both ways by both teams, and that's where we stand at 16 to 10. A minute and 34 remaining in a fourth and inches coming up for Florida. And this is sort of Neverland because it would be a 47 yard field goal attempt for Matt Leach. They don't want to punt, obviously, from well, this yeah, point. Yeah, you got a lot. You, I, you got a lot of things going on on the Gators sideline. You say, well, we don't want to miss it and give them the ball back, but we'd like to keep the drive going. You know, it's too far for a field goal. So you, you got to know what strengths they they like. They're 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 inside three offensive linemen are probably their best. Snell, yeah. DeGory, and Starks. Right. 
And I think that's why they tried the quarterback sneak, thinking that those were their three best linemen. Now they hustle up to the line. Leak gives it off to win, and he keeps his legs moving, and I think he got it this yeah. time. Yeah. Deshaun Wynn just kept grinding. He didn't get much, but he didn't need much, I, I obviously. I think he was stepping on the backs of some of his <laughs> offensive linemen. It did look like he wasn't hitting turf, did it? They unpile everybody. Florida says first down. It sure looks like one from that angle, obviously. And... They want to be sure so they are going to bring out the chain but I think he got it by the half the length of the football maybe more. Larry Coker he very seldom has to say anything in a locker room about his team being behind much less ever losing he's only had one speech where he had to talk about losing the football game and that was the national championship. They got it by half the length of the football first down Florida now they hustle up to the line at the 29 yard line with 126 left in the quarter trying to add to a six point lead. Leeko worked from the shotgun with Kite and Small out to his left side. And Perez down to the bottom of your screen. Leak over the middle, tips, incomplete. And trail roll, I think, is the guy that got a hand on it. So it's second down and ten. Clock stopped. You see the play being singled in yep. by Ed Zonbrecker. Yep. Yep. And he likes this kid Leak. He says he's smart. He's bright. He's always he didn't come to Gainesville until this summer. You know a lot of them go in the spring session but right. he didn't get there until the summer was always in the study room in the film room. At the 29 yard line he pumps to the left and comes back to the wideout screen and Miami's not biting on it. They run Perez out of bounds and now a flag flies in late. Sean Taylor and Alfonso Marshall were the guys over there to make the play. Sean Taylor looked like he was pleading his case. And he still is. I think he may have hit him out of bounds. It just took him out of bounds. There might be a double call here, guys. I think there might have been holding by Florida and then maybe a late hit by Miami. There were two fouls. The first was a live ball foul holding on the offense. That'll be 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Then there was a dead ball personal foul on the defense. That'll be 15 yards and an automatic first down. So it's going to be five yards going that way. Good call, Swanee. Yeah, but the bottom line is Florida gets penalized 10 yards back, and then they get 15 yards forward and a first down. So when you do the math they gain five they gain a first down and they keep the drive a lot. Yeah here's the uh, here's the hit out of bounds. Ben troops the guy call for the holding right there at the top of your screen now Taylor comes yes. in boom right there Yeah, right there. So it's first down Gators at the 23 yard line. Leak snaps one on a quick slant complete inside the 15 to Reggie Lewis. So last week Florida had 11 guys catch passes and they're starting to spread it around a little bit right here. Three wide outs to the near side straight ahead. Leak trying to pick up the first down and this time he might have. I don't know. Oh well, maybe not. Chris might want to quit running. And he is short. So it's going to be third down and almost a yard. 30 seconds remaining in the half Florida leading and it's leaked from the shotgun. So unless it's a quarterback draw he's going to throw one here. Now he takes off and he does throw to the end zone. Nope out of bounds. Laid it out there for Dallas Baker. He came down with it but he's out of bounds. He may have been able to run that ball but decided to throw it. You can tell he has a lot of confidence in his oh, yeah. arm. Yeah, I like I like what I see, and so does Ron Zook. He says he's going to be a fine player. He's three of seven, 19 yards. Bob and Brad, you can't tell a whole lot just by catching a few passes in pregame warm-up, but I did take the time to catch a few of Leak's passes while we're down in the field. And I watched the other guys throw the ball. Every single pass he threw to me, every time I watched him on the field, perfect control of the football, nice tight spiral, and a good whip on 
that arm. So I mean of the three guys he just looks like the best passer. A timeout with 15 seconds taken by the Gators. Going up Thursday September 18th. Meet a team who under direct orders from the president has only one mission. That's to keep us all safe. A new drama. It's called Threat Matrix. Thursday September 18th. 8 7 Central on ABC. We talked about Chris Leak, the senior, uh, the uh, freshman who, through his high school career, threw 185 touchdown passes, over 15,000 yards of passing. And I was thinking to myself, I wonder who the best receiver he ever threw to was. And Swanee just gave me the answer, and Swanee didn't even know we were doing this. Here's Chris Leak warming up before the game with our Hall of Fame wide receiver partner. And, and I got to tell you, you know. He was throwing a nice pass, but he took it easy on me. As <laughs> soon as I stepped in, he smiled and he kind of lightened up. I walked up to him and says, look, you know, I, I know I'm retired. I know I'm retired. But you don't have to take that much and, off and, it, right? And, and my legs aren't quite the same <laughs> as they used to be, but the hands are still good. The hands are still good. He just laughed and said, that's okay. I didn't want to hurt you before the game. By the way, folks, <laughs> Swanee did not drop any. And we watched for quite a while. It's a 30-yard field goal attempt by Matt Leach out of Sean Morton's hole. Leach kick. It is good. Just barely. Looked like he pushed it too far to the right, but he tucked it in there, and Florida adds to its lead. So Larry Coker's team is going to go to the locker room down at halftime, and that doesn't happen very often. It's, uh, the offense is just not getting anything done. The offensive line is, needs to pass block. It seems like more often than not that the quarterbacks are getting hit. Brock Berlin, every time he's dropping back to throw, and when he hit us half time to throw, they need to make some something happen. Well, they knew that the offensive line would be a little bit of a question mark. I mean, you go back two years ago on the Miami team that was the national champions, and they had Bilba and Haji Razuli and McKinney. Romberg and Gonzalez and Bryant McKinney. I mean, come yeah. on. Yeah. Shockey was their tight end. That's yeah. a wall. Yeah, they lost they lost two of those guys, three of those guys a couple of years ago, and two of them this past year. And they're all in the NFL. So that offensive line is all new from two years ago. Yeah, when you think about when Ken Dorsey first came to Miami, look at the talent he also had. He had Moss, he had Reggie Wayne, yeah. he had Bubba Franks at tight end. And he had a lot of support to help build his confidence. That's true. You don't expect that Florida is going to give Miami any kind of return possibilities because Taylor's taken 167 yards and set up a field goal. Hester opened the game number four, the freshman with a 97 yard scoring return. So I would assume that Petrovic is going to. Squib something or get it a mile in the air and force a fair catch again. And he does kick it way up in the air, but this is returnable. Taylor from the 12. Sean cuts to the near side, broke a tackle or two, still on his feet, and he's out to the 25 with just three seconds remaining in the half. So since uh, those fireworks on the first couple of kick returns, Florida's done a nice job slowing things down and. Miami's not going to take any chances here. Three seconds, and they'll go to the locker room trailing the Florida Gators by nine. What a big win this would be for the Gators and Ron Zook. Last year, his first year at uh, Gainesville, eight and five. That's, the, that's as many losses that they've had in there since yeah. uh, 1989, I think. That's right. Spurrier got there in 1990. Berlin takes a knee. The half is complete. So these two teams hooking up for the 52nd time. Miami has a one game lead. Florida's trying to change it. Let's check in with Lynn. Coach Zook, you, sur you survived the big Orange Bowl opening, the big plays by Miami, and you answered with your own. You're up by nine points. Any of this surprise you, good or bad? Well, you know, we got to keep playing. You know, like we told me, we got to got to be able to handle the onslaught and stay with the, you know, there's going to be an onslaught. Keep playing. That's what they did. They've done a good job. And we got to we got to get our kicking game cleaned up, and we got to go out and continue to play. We'll see you in the second half, Coach. When leading at the half, they don't lose often. Miami very seldom trails at the half. But the Florida Gator fans who have come to South Florida from Gainesville are a happy bunch at halftime. 
19 to 10 Gators. We'll be joining John and Terry at Times Square Stadium in New York for the Valvoline Halftime Show right after this. You're watching ABC Sports Championship Television. Brock Berlin warming up his first home start as a hurricane. His team is down nine points at halftime. Welcome back to the Orange Bowl. Brad Nessler and Bob Greasy. Partner, we spent a lot of time with that young fellow over the last two days. He was very confident, seemed very ready for this game. His statistics are not very good. Neither is his whole team. If it wasn't for the kickoff returns, Canes wouldn't even be in this thing. That's true. And, and Florida has kind of uh, not taken advantage. They've had the ball three times in Miami's territory and only come away with six points. Miami needs to get the ball to their main guys. Kellen Winslow. One catch. One catch. They threw to him three times in the first drive. They haven't thrown to him in the last 25 plays. And Ryan Moore, the split in on the other side, he doesn't have a catch. So I'm sure we'll see number 81 very involved in the second half. They've almost got to get it to their playmakers. Meanwhile, Engel Martin and Chris Leak both did a respectable job for the Gators in their quarterback stints. The key there, Gators have not turned the ball over. Right. Miami's turned it over twice, and it's cost them. Won a fumble, won the errant pass by Brock Berlin that ended up being a lateral scooped up by Kewan Ratliff for a touchdown, and that's been the difference in the ballgame so far. Mark Jentz got it teed up. Andre Caldwell and Ronaldo Hill are back deep for the Gators. And this one goes out of bounds, so a poor kick, much like the poor punt, by the Canes in the first half and it'll give Florida great starting field position at the 35 yard line our Pacific life game summary let's take a look at the halftime statistics the, the key thing is uh, which is highlighted two turnovers for Miami the time of possession is about the same penalties nothing there nobody's doing well on third down conversions Really, the only offense has been for Miami. It seems Frank Gore, once he got his rushing legs under him a little bit. Yeah. And a big advantage, average starting time for the Gators is huge. And they have good field position here. Martin at quarterback, Florida from its own 35. And it's win and win down the sideline. Three Canes to beat. They can't get him. Touchdown, Florida. 65 yards on the opening play of the third quarter. All that speed in Miami's defense, you thought somebody would get a shot at him, but nobody did. Huge play coming out second half for the Gators. When's the last time we did a game that the first play of the first quarter was a touchdown and the first play of the third quarter was a touchdown? No, but I like it. We ought to have more. <laughs> well, that one took all of 11 seconds. The Hurricane fans are in shock right now. Here's Florida with its swinging gate extra point. Will be assessed on the kickoff. So another flag. Unsportsmanlike conduct on Florida will be assessed on the kickoff, much like what happened to the Hurricanes after the opening play of the first quarter. So the Gator fans who've come down here from Gainesville are a happy group. A long way to go, but you very seldom see Miami in a 16-point hole. Wow. <laughs> Let's go back and take a look. You know, they left. They allow you to play with 11 guys. Miami, Miami only has 10. They got four here, three here, and these three. That's 10 players. That's why you, there's nobody on the top of the screen making the play. There should be another safety in the back right back there. And Wynn broke two tackles, and then he just outran everybody. Showing great speed after the two broken tackles. He got through D.J. Williams and somebody else. John Taylor. And then down the sideline, he bolted. This is a, I, I dare say that Miami has not been down by 16 points at the beginning of the second half in a long, long time. It might be three years. It might be more than that. 23 unanswered points by the Florida Gators. 
But now they're going to be forced to kick off from their own 20-yard line again after the unsportsmanlike conduct call. So Hester back there would like to get his hands on it again. There he is, number four. Petrovic with a kick that goes to the 17. Hester broke a couple tackles, and he gets out to the 45-yard line. Penalty marker's down. It looked like Florida must have been offside on their kicking unit because the flag came right where they kicked from. So they might have to do this again, or maybe uh, the Canes will just say, we'll take it here. And now, Hester shake it up. So the freshman out of Riviera Beach, Florida, being attended to after another nice kick return. 22 straight at home. The longest in college football right now. The last home loss, you ask? Well, Butch Davis was the head coach of the Canes. It was in September of 99. And Joe Paterno came in here. They got a long touchdown pass down the sideline. That's the one that did it. And Joe Paz troops went on to beat Miami 27-23. That's the last time the Canes have tasted defeat on their home turf. And they're in a little bit of trouble right here. 26 to 10 they trail, courtesy of that young fella's romp, 65 yards down the sideline. Miami defensively last year was seventh in the nation in total defense. They lost six of their defensive linemen. Six of their top seven defensive linemen are gone, but the back seven are there. Now the pressure is on the shoulders of Brock Berlin. But they'll keep it on the ground. Gore bobbled it a little bit, found the handle, and Frank goes into Florida territory where Matt Jackson brings him down at about the 42-yard line. They actually yeah. give Frank nine, so it'll be second down and uh, a yard to go. Yep. Miami needs to do now. That, you know, they're not used to being in this position. Of course, there's a lot of players out there that aren't used to being out there, like Brock Berlin. Right. You need to get the ball to your playmakers. Gore, Moore, Ryan Moore, and uh, Winslow. Winslow's on the left side right now. Berlin looks left and goes high in and out of the hands a beard incomplete as we check in with Swanick. Well, Bob and Brad, when I talked to Larry Coker as he came back on the field, we talked about the second half, and he said the key is better execution. So we've got to come out in the field, do the things we know how to do. That last pass was a perfect example of what he does not want to do. The offense is just not executing very well. I asked him if he would also continue or want to run the football more in the second half. He felt that they could run the ball. They just got to get back to their basics and not hurt themselves. They weren't planning on giving up a 65 yard touchdown and getting seven more points behind though. They do put it on the ground here to Gore and he gets a first down. Brock Berlin by the way has missed his last four pass attempts. Some of them have been dropped tonight. There's no doubt about that. But he's definitely been off on some of them. That last one that he threw to Beard. I think you have to move your feet a little bit. There was a guy the defensive man that jumped in his face. If you just sat and then slide a little bit throwing there's his numbers those are un Miami hurricane quarterback type numbers still a long ways to go though early in the third quarter a 16 point shocker right now in the Gators favor Berlin fires and that one is tipped and it is intercepted by Daryl Dixon Corey Bailey tipped it Dixon picked it off his first interception in a couple of years So Brock Berlin not only has missed his last four passes, the fifth one went to his old teammates. Gators with a lead, and they'll take the ball when we come back. I tell you what, they might want to get Sipowicz down here and arrest the Gators for assault and battery the way things are going right now. <laughs> 26 to 10, Florida. They take over on the interception. Martin pump fakes and goes deep middle. O.J. Small's got it. Into the Kane secondary to the 43-yard line. 
35 yards on the pass play. And again, just good coaching on the part of the Gators. Martin pumps, pumps short. He pumps it a couple times. To get the the uh, Hurricanes jump on the Gator receivers. Watch him here. That's a little pump and go. Look, pump twice. Now you're open. You're behind him. That's because Roll and the other defenders were jumping on the shortstop. Now back to the ground for Florida. Very short gain as Atkins puts the stop on Deshaun Wynn, who had the touchdown run here in this quarter. Let's check in on another Florida team. Here's John Saunders. And here with your Taco Bell update, Florida State. Are they now the power in the state of Florida? Chris Ricks to P.K. Sam. It covers 34 yards. He just dives into the touchdown. In control now, 28-10. And here are the Gators right now in control, 26-10. And Martin takes off. Nobody home in the middle. The quarterback draw, and he keeps it close to a first down. He's a pretty nifty little runner. He has, and the defensive line for the Hurricanes is not making any plays. Usually when you're rushing the passer, there was somebody was holding one of them. Maybe that's why he wasn't making the plays. <laughs> it could be. But that was one of the keys for the ball game, as we talked to Randy Shannon, and we talked to some of the defensive players, to find out whether the front line of this defensive unit could put pressure without blitzing as we look at the holding call against Florida, without having to blitz linebackers and use a lot of other personnel in the defense to pressure the quarterback and contain the run. So far, what we've seen tonight is this defensive line cannot do that on their own. A defensive line from a year ago, many of those guys in the National Football League, and they could rotate eight or nine. That big fella right there in the middle is the one that you would think would be the run stopper, but Vince Wolfork can't do it all by himself. Yeah, they had two defensive linemen drafted in the first round. Joseph and McDougal and three others were drafted in the third fourth and fifth Martin fires complete inside the 40 Williams immediately puts the stop on Andre Caldwell Caldwell whose older brother was Shea was a star receiver for the Gators now with the San Diego Chargers and the young fella out of Tampa has the catch still third down though and a long five Speaking of five, that's how many receivers Engel Martin will have at yep. his disposal. Three on this side, two at the top. From the 38-yard line. Canes need a stop. They're trailing by 16. And they're going to get a stop here. They drop Martin at the 40-yard line. John Vilma came on the blitz. Orion Harris makes the stop on the quarterback as we check in again with another update. Here's John. Oklahoma, number one team in the nation, facing Alabama. And Jason White looks to his left and then looks deep. 47 yards. Brandon Jones is wide open. Takes a lick. Goes into the end zone for the touchdown. Oklahoma getting a little bit of breathing room, but Alabama hanging tight. 20 to 10. Not too much coming cheaply in college football for anybody today, especially Jason. Miami right now. Yeah, nice to see Jason White back at Oklahoma, yep. quarterback after two years of uh, knee surgeries. Javon Anton trotting off. He was the cane that was shaken up. Sophomore out of uh, Miami. Here's another look. He was the one chasing Engel Martin. And ooh, <laughs> he got it with Randy Hand. I think their hips met. And uh, that'll slow your hip down a little bit. Punt upcoming, trying to angle it to the far side. And it goes out of bounds. Let's see where they spot it. It's going to be around the 10, I think. Nope, they're coming up farther. At about the 12 or 13 right there. 28 yard punt, but buries. The Canes again offensively. And their offense has been sputtering at best. Sunday, September 28th on ABC. An ex-juvenile delinquent from New York has one chance to redeem himself by becoming a cop in L.A. 10-8. Officers on duty Sunday, September 28th at 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock Central on ABC. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew from the Orange Bowl of Miami sold out crowd. A lot of Gator haters and a lot of Gator fans, and right now the Gators have the best of the Canes, 26 to 10. We're starting field position for Miami. 
Berlin, who was intercepted on his last throw, got this one out in front of Winslow, and Winslow puts his head down and plows through a couple of Florida players. His first catch since the opening drive of the ball game. And he's a little bit short of the first down, but at least they get it in his hands. The last possession for Brock was one he'd just as soon forget, that's for sure. Yeah, not, not having a good day. Overthrows an open receiver, and then right here throws it too far to the inside to Moss, and it's inter intercepted. Berlin has just been a little bit off on a lot of his throws tonight. First one of the last six passes that he's completed, and now flags are down before this play can get going. It was going to be a handoff to Frank Gore. And this will make it a longer yardage situation. Dead ball, false start on the offense, five-yard penalty, second down. BYU now making it a little bit harder on USC as you see some of the scores from around the country. Michigan big in their win at home today, and they'll have a big one with Notre Dame coming up. 17-yard line now is the line of scrimmage after the penalty. Joel Rodriguez, Brad, remember... Brock was telling us he's a sweater. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> Things can get slippery. <laughs> and let's see if this time it's Florida offside, as it looked like Brock Berlin kind of changed his cadence a little bit, trying to draw him off sides, and Ray McDonald might have been the guy that goes right back the other way with five yards. Going back to what Bob talked about a little bit with Joe Rodriguez, the center. We talked about Brock Berlin. We talked, we said, man, what happened on that play in the opener when you had a wide open guy in the flat on the play action on the bootleg and you just fanned the ball went off the back of his hand. He said, well, the ball was so wet. And we said, was it raining down there in Louisiana? He said, not really. Well, what, what the problem is, is, is Rodriguez is a sweater and he sweats and he drips on the ball. Not only does he drip from his helmet and his face, but his <laughs> rear end is so wet that when he sticks his hands under there, not only does his hands get wet, but the ball is wet. Now, I'd have to take care of that somehow or other. They got to figure out a way. Or I got to get way. me a new center. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I can't have a wet ball coming up. I don't know if they make athletic depends, but that's what I suggested <laughs> to Brock for his center. <laughs> we all got a good laugh out of it, but it's a problem he's oh, having. Yeah. And, uh, and it has been a long night so far. Third down at two. The plays called in from the sideline by signals. Then Brock looks down on that sweatband on his left hand. And they're still working the kinks out of that system. He's not used to just looking over there and knowing exactly what he's going to do. He's hoping there's not a, too much wetness right there if he has to throw. Third and two. And he will. And he throws it right to Florida. Johnny Lamar. Another Florida interception. Not a good night in his opener in a Canes uniform. Johnny Lamar, I think, probably cramped up right after he made that catch. He's probably so surprised he's cramped his whole body. It hit him right between the three and the one. I, I think it was a case of jersey confusion. He, for a moment there, maybe he thought he was playing for Florida. Boy, that's a good point. He maybe said, well, I remember Johnny's got good hands. Bang, he hits him. Ryan Moore is number 85. He's expecting Moore just to run a little stop route. And uh, Lamar has the short outside coverage, and he throws it right to him. Illegal substitution on the offense. 12 men in the formation. Five-yard penalty. First down. What is this, the fourth time that Florida has gotten the ball in Miami territory? And it'll be at the 33-yard line for the first and 15. In addition to that, Florida scored a touchdown on the lateral by um, Berlin. So Florida defensively is really showing up big here tonight. Chris Leak back in at quarterback. On the ground is Carthen. And John Square made the tackle. You know, Brad, I think, you know, I think after all Berlin has gone through that, I think you put the other guy in. I think you put uh, Derek. Derek Yeah. Uh, because this could, I mean, he, he probably, he, he, you know, I know if I'd played this poorly, I'd say, all right, let the other guy go in. See if he, you know, because I'm just, you know, I'm just playing so poorly. Leak fires into traffic and zips it to his tight end, Ben Troop. Very close to a first down. If I were Brock Berlin and I were playing against my old teammates, 
If I were playing against my old team, I'd say, hey, I know those guys for two years. A lot of them are my buddies. My roommate is my, the middle linebacker over there. Now I'm playing with some other guys. You know, I, like, I still like those guys, and those guys like me. I don't. I, I think that would help me. I'd be, be more relaxed than really get, get that nervous about it. Third down in the yard. Two out of nine for Florida. Leak to Carthon, and he bangs his way for what looks like a first down. John Vilma stood him up. But it looks like he had a first down. You may have seen what Bob was talking about. Berlin head coach Larry Coker come over to him, too, and say, come on, keep it going. Stay in it. Yeah, well, you're hoping that he goes back out there and does something good. But if he continues to make mistakes like he's been doing, maybe you're doing him a favor by putting the other guy in. Chain gang almost forgot to move the sticks. Finally, they set him down. It's at the 17-yard line. First down, Florida. Leak with three receivers down there at the bottom of your picture. And he stumbles going back. Flags are down. Everybody moving on both lines. And I don't know who jumped first. Of course, a difference in cadence between Martin and Leak, and that's something the offensive linemen have to get used to. Dead ball foul, snap infraction on the offense. Five yard penalty, first down. So they walk it off against Florida. We walk it off to New York. Here's John. Kansas State in what you might call the soft part of their schedule. And today, L. Roberson taking advantage. 43 yards to James Terry. This was an early 10 to nothing lead, and they just make it a blowout over McNeese State. 55 14, the final. John here, a shocker going on, 26 to 10, and Florida threatening again. First and 15. And that time, nowhere to hide as DJ Williams makes the play. Williams, who had a 78-yard fumble return for a touchdown last week, probably the most highly decorated uh, guy coming into this Gator, uh, the Hurricane program in a long time, and it kind of wore him down a little bit. There were people that said, hey, he's so good he should go straight to the NFL if there wasn't a rule against it. And it took him a while to find his feet, and now he is a Butkus candidate, an outside linebacker. He's a senior, and he's a heck of a good one. Outstanding player. At the 24, Leak fires, got a man, Troop, what a catch! Then Troop holds it in, it's first and goal for Florida. So much talk about Kellen Winslow being one of the greatest tight ends, if not the best one in the country. A lot of people think this guy's going to go pretty high next year, too. For sure. Ben Troop was really the, one of the go-to guys. I was impressed with Leak, though. He looked one way and threw the other. Pretty good for a true freshman. Now it's Carthon ran. Carthon ran into the end zone. Touchdown, Florida. A winning streak at the Orange Bowl is in serious, serious jeopardy. And so is the number three ranking in the country. Florida just taking care of the Canes right now. It's a big, big win for the Gators if they go on and win this ball game. Big win for the program. They've lost the last four games and seven of the last nine against the, against the uh, Hurricanes. Leach knocks in the extra point. If you just turned on your TV or just joined us at the Orange Bowl, you can't believe what's happening. Troop with a catch. Carthon with a touchdown. Florida 33-10. Thirty three to ten Florida leading ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chrysler Pacifica well beyond the SUV FedEx you can always rely on the ultimate in reliable shipping relax it's FedEx total cereal one bowl hundred percent and ADT America's leader in business and home security ADT always there the Gator fans that are here are a happy bunch. Leak through that pass to Troop, who made a great catch. Carthon did the rest. Right now, 18th ranked Florida. Shocking number three, Miami. Still a long way to go, but it's 33 to 10. There are a lot of Gator fans in Dade County, let me tell you. There's a bunch of them. 
Here's the kick. A mile in the air. Fielded at the 15 by Jenkins. And he only got to the 24, and a flag flies into Booth. And this might go against the Canes for an illegal block on the return. And if so, they're going to put themselves in a hole again. With the exception of those two kickoff returns in the first quarter, their field position has been horrendous. During the return, illegal block in the back on the receiving team, 10-yard penalty from the end of the return, it'll be first down. And so they're going to move it back inside the 20, the 20th penalty of the game. 33 regular season wins in a row, 22 home game wins in a row. And now, now you hate to hear that. The Boo Birds are out. Yeah, you never like to hear your your own guys get booed at home. But I think I think the, the Hurricane fans are a little bit spoiled by Ken Dorsey and what he's done here for the last uh, three years. So at the 15-yard line is Miami. Berlin throws short, in and tips, intended for Winslow and Dixon again put the hit on Winslow, and that one popped up in the air. Here's the possessions for Miami. It hasn't been pretty. Take out, take out the half. The, the, the first two possessions in the second half were interceptions. All they got was a field goal in their first possession, and they haven't done anything all day. Four, four, four turnovers. Touchdown. Four yeah. turnovers in the last six possessions. Four turnovers, last six possessions. The only touchdown came on the opening kickoff of the game. Berlin from the shotgun. Fires far side. Nice throw. First down. And finally they get one to Ryan Moore. Pick up of 12. And they move the sticks. Your attitude now is if you're Brock Berlin, you're probably not going to win this game. But I'm going to set myself up for the rest of the season. And they're going without a huddle, trying to hurry things up. 5.45, all that's left in the third quarter. And a long ways to come from behind. Berlin waits, has a man open in the middle, and Beard makes a diving catch. So here's Beard, who's yeah. dropped a couple today yeah. that were easy. Yeah. And he dives for that one and gets it. Then, then he starts hot-dogging it. I mean, come on. Just make the plays and get back to the huddle. outside the 43 yard line again from the gun Berlin flares it out to Gore out of the backfield and Frank goes out of bounds just shy of midfield so they're slowly moving themselves into decent field position and of course yeah now now Brock Berlin on this drive is is so much different than he has been on all the other drives he seems alert attentive his movements are quicker. He's more accurate. It's like it's like he was in a daze the first four, two quarters and a half, and now he's coming out. He's throwing the ball much better. This sense of urgency is shaking whatever cobwebs he had in there, at least on this drive right now. Hand off on a draw play to Gore. And a first down run for Gore inside the 45-yard line. Travis Harris made the stop. And Brad, maybe that's the big difference, that sense of urgency, giving him a, a different timing in the ballgame. I don't think in the entire first half of the Miami offense, they ever felt like they were in rhythm. Everything yep. kind of happened. Big play, not in sync. Now on this drive, changing the pace has helped them out. And everything came so easy in the opener and the win over San Jose State. Or rather over Louisiana Tech, rather, for uh, Miami last week. And Kellen Winslow now with a catch. Ratliff, who had the fumble return that kind of changed the whole complexion of the ball game, is the guy that made the stop. Second down, a long five. Ratliff is playing a good game. He and Dixon in that secondary. And Johnny Lamar, too. Oh, yes. And Gus Scott's one of the leaders back there. Yes, we haven't heard much haven't from heard him. from him. Berlin, plenty of time to throw. Gore trying to break a tackle and can't. They only got about two yards on that pass completion. Channing Crowder, who's had a good game, the freshman out of Atlanta, made the stop. 
Again, Berlin checking the side from the sideline. Miami offensive line stays right up on the ball. And you can see where they have to get for the first down. It's third down and three. This is probably two down territory the rest of the ball game. Oh, yeah. Berlin steps up in the pocket and rifles one down the middle for a first down. Yeah, now he's now he's on target, throwing with some purpose. His feet are moving around, and he's and he's into it. Now why does that happen? Probably the first first half he was probably just playing not to make a mistake, and he was just trying to be too careful. But now he says, I don't care. I, I've made enough mistakes. I'm going to go out there and start doing something right the way I know how to do it. And he's been slinging it. First down. Back to throw again. Going deep. Got a man. Bird. Touchdown, Miami. 26 yard strike. The Berlin Wall hasn't fallen completely. He's still in the hunt. And Beard, who couldn't seem to catch a cold in the first half, caught everything on that drive. What, what a difference, huh? Yeah. What a difference. Going to go for two here. They've got a chart upstairs in the, in the coach's box. <laughs> if you're down by so and so many points, it's best to go for two. I used to have one. I burned it. <laughs> I did too. I carried, that, <laughs> I carried that thing around for 10 years. Yeah, I got rid of it. <laughs> I just don't buy it. All you need to know is they've got a chart that tells them when to go to do this. Here's a two-point conversion, and they get it. And they got it to Ryan Moore, so it worked. And it's only a 15-point game now. When once, just minutes ago, it seemed that a Florida romp was about to occur. Brock Berlin, to a chorus of boos, came back out on the field, drove his team the length of it, and Kevin Beard did the rest. A two-score ball game thanks to the catch by Beard on a 26-yard pass as Berlin was almost perfect. Seven out of eight, part of 81 yards in an 85-yard drive. Those same fans there that were cheering yeah. were probably the same ones that were booing when Berlin went in. That's exactly right. At the beginning of that drive. That's the way to play it. Brian Monroe will kick off. Caldwell and Hill are deep. It's a good kick. It'll tail to the goal line to Hill. And Hill trying to get the corner on the far side. And he got hammered out of bounds at about the 26-yard line. Take a look right now at our Chrysler Passing Playbook, Grease. All right, let's do this Chrysler Passing Playbook. This is called four vertical. You got four receivers. This one down the sideline, this one, this one, and this one down the middle. Now let's take a look at it. You pick the guy that's open. You got all four going straight down the field. You can throw it anywhere you want, but look where he goes with it, to the guy right in the middle of the field. This is a great route against a lot of different coverages. A lot of teams have it, four vertical, four guys splitting the, the field in four quadrants. Florida from its own 26. Carthon got a couple tough yards and actually falls forward. It wasn't Carthon, it was Wynn, excuse me. He gets across the 30. Wynn's the guy that broke the game open to start the third quarter with a 65-yard run down the <laughs> sideline on the first snap of the third. Been some big, big plays in this game. And if I'm not mistaken, partner, is this not the first time they've broken the rotation? Didn't Leak play the last series? They've been yes. Martin two and then yes, Leak one? Yes, he did. Well, this is two in a row for Chris now. Second down and four. Chris has scored on his last two possessions. A touchdown and a field goal. Waiting for the snap. On the ground they go again. This time it's facing. Basin didn't get to the first down marker courtesy of Sean Taylor, the big safety who wouldn't let him get there. Taylor with a nice stop. And it's going to be third down and short. Down on the field before the ball game. And I was talking to one of the coaches. I was talking to Ed Zombrecker, the offensive coordinator. You see that towel that's hanging down? Yeah. I can tell that story in a minute. Flares a pass out and small is almost beheaded by Sean uh, Marie Sykes. Ouch, that one hurts. 
That little drive by the offense of Miami has set off the defense. Gets it. This is like a, a long handoff. And uh, <laughs> that one's going to leave a mark. Sykes says, I'm handing it off to you. Yeah. Yeah, this one hurts right under the chin. And a punting situation for Wilbur. Miami's got all kinds of guys that can run kicks back. They haven't put much pressure on this freshman punter tonight. He gets away a dandy here. Parrish has to come all the way across field. It bounces out of bounds at about the 31 yard line. Time permitting. Stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post game report. John and Terry been at Times Square Stadium since about six o'clock this morning. Love scores and highlights from around the country for you. They're in shaving right now. Yeah, they are. And for the second time today. Yeah. Yeah, they're getting mean. rid of the shadows. Yeah. Now. Yeah. At the 31, all of a sudden you feel the electricity start to rise a little bit at the Orange Bowl. 33-18. Berlin nearly perfect on the last drive for the Canes, and let's see if he can do that again. He's hit his last seven passes. Florida mixing up their defense. Charlie Strong, the defensive corner, goes to a three-man line. So with that, it's a draw play to Gore. And Gore gets out near the 37-yard line. Six-yard run down to a minute. 20 now remaining in the third quarter. There's Charlie. Charlie making really what his fifth trip to the uh, being exactly. part of the Gator program. Yep. Your count being a grad assistant at one right. point. He spent the last seven years with Lou Holtz. He was in South Carolina for three, I believe, and then the last, the four previous to that was in Notre Dame. Highly, highly thought of coordinator. And will be a head coach without a doubt. Second down and four. Need to get to the 41 yard line. Berlin. Fires down the middle and he's got a man again. And it's a race for Kevin Beard. Can he win it down the sideline? Out at the one foot line. And Brock Berlin's growing a beard. And I think the Hurricanes have found themselves their quarterback. Amid a chorus of boos, he's now hit eight passes in a row, including almost another touchdown. Sometimes you have to sink so low before you can rise so high. Beard almost got there. He dived for the corner, and he came up that much shy. A career-long, though, 62-yard reception for Kevin Beard. The two guys that weren't getting it done before are getting it done now, Beard and Berlin. First and goal, Canes. Frank Gore. Touchdown, Miami. We got a ball game. Unbelievable. Frank Gore from a yard. 33-24. With a point after try coming up. I don't think they got a holder out there right now. Look at Berlin. Is he fired up now? He's into the game now. John Petty's going, where's my holder? Apparently, <laughs> Cap Carter thought maybe they were going for two. I don't know. They've got it set now. Up and good. Well, the reason they didn't go for two that time is now they're only down eight. So they can go for it the next time if they get there. And now the Hurricanes have a warning for the Gators fans who have become quiet, courtesy of an ex-Gator named Brock Berlin. What a turn of events. 15 unanswered points after Florida had scored 23 unanswered points. Here's the inside receiver. Beard just gonna run a little down and square in. Makes a nice move. Now look at it. He's gonna run away from the group. Beard's got the speed. Every receiver would love a pass like that. He didn't have to break stride, gets it, gets every opportunity to make the catch and run with the ball. And Gore into the end zone for the touchdown. Swanee, why is it? Why is Beard 
running good routes and catching it now. And why is Berlin playing so well now when they weren't doing it in the first half? I really do believe it's going to the no huddle offense. As Brad pointed out, that sense of urgency, changing the pace of the game, and just doing basic fundamental things. There was no big play. It was just people executing, turning a basic play into a big play. I think it's just these guys knew that they weren't playing well and they could play better, and they said, let's just go do it. Monroe to kick. High and going down inside the five, taken at the four by Caldwell. Caldwell broke one tackle, won't get through the second wave. Down at the 18-yard line. Guys, you remember the Florida State-Miami game of a year ago where all of a sudden there was just electricity in the air? Are you starting to feel that a little bit right now? I am, and I go back to what I said at the beginning. Fireworks and, and uh, sparklers and everything going off. And, and this is exciting. And when I talked to Ron Zook going off the field, you could tell he understood the potential of the offensive team he was facing. He knew Miami had the ability to come back, and he did not want to rest on that good first half. I'm a little surprised that Chris Leak is in at this time. Third straight series for the freshman. He'll give it off to Carthon. And now the Hurricanes defense starting to swarm a little. Sean Taylor in on the stop along with the guys on that front wall. And Sean Taylor, we spent some time with him yesterday, and he's an engaging young fellow. But, Swanee, I said to you when he walked by you a couple times, how many licks could you take from a safety that big? Well, I'm telling you, I wouldn't want to take one from him. I told him <laughs> if he hit me more than three times in the ball game, I must be out of my mind and doing something horribly wrong. Another but exciting I build a quarter. I defense around this kid. That's right. Another exciting quarter. We played three at the Orange Bowl. 33 to 25 who'll survive the last 15 our presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations you're watching ABC Sports Championship Television ABC Sports welcomes you back to this week's BCS Spotlight game presented by ADT Twenty three unanswered points by Florida between the second and third quarters 15 straight now by Miami in the third. We got a ball game. We start the fourth with Chris Leak still at quarterback. You saw Engel Martin in the background with his helmet off. Leak incomplete broken up by Antrell Rowe. There's Martin with his helmet off. They had been rotating that two series for him one for Chris Leak until these last two series and Leak now his third series in a row. Remember, this is a kid that three months ago was changing the tassel on his cap from one side to the other coming out of high school. Exactly. Now they've both been in about the same number of plays. 26 for Leak, 25 for Martin. And here's a crucial third down for the Gators, who've seen their momentum snatched by the Canes. Here they come. Leak, they're coming after him. Got away from one. Won't get away again. I was surprised he was still in there because Martin knows more about the offense and the defenses and can handle a little bit better. Jonathan Lee, Vilma makes the sack. Lee can do more things. He can get out and scramble, but he can't get away from four or five defensive guys from Miami. John Vilma, who's become a star. DJ Williams came on the blitz. You saw the pressure come from square, and then Vilma and Wilfork said, uh-uh, kid. Boom. And they're just too quick. Just too much quickness. Punt upcoming. Long, deep kick. Parrish backpedals to the 26. Roscoe Parrish weaving. Flags down. This will negate a pretty nifty little return to the 46. It'll be an illegal block on the return, I'm sure. A 20-yard return by Parrish. So the field position won't be as good as it would have been. Boy, has the momentum of this game ben changed. With the tackle. You know, you talk about college football. This is one thing. The, mo on the, receiving team, the momentum in a college game can change so quickly. Yep. And right now, in the last couple series, the momentum swinging like a saloon door. <laughs> and it swung in the Canes' favor at the 30-yard line. They take over, trailing by eight. 14 minutes and change <laughs> remaining. <laughs> Only an eight-point difference. And a red, red, red hot quarterback wearing a Miami Hurricane orange jersey. 
trying to beat his former team from Gainesville. And I'd be looking for my tight end. Berlin pumps, goes to the screen pass, and it goes nowhere. A loss on the play of a yard. Gore tackled by Matt Jackson. Brock Berlin, whose second half started shaky, to say the least. There's the throw right to Johnny Lamar. And then he went to work, went seven out of eight on a drive that capped by that touchdown, then found Beard. Again, 62 yards to the one. Gore scored from there, and that's where we stand at 33-25. Berlin steps up in the pocket with guys draped all over him. He finds Winslow. It's a totally different player than the one we saw in the first two and a half quarters. He's hit 10 straight passes now, yeah. and it's first down Miami. And he's, and he's doing everything right. Looking players off, stepping up, moving around, making decisions. Gets pressure from the outside, slides up in the pocket. They again go without the huddle from the gun. First down. Berlin over the middle. Got a man wide open again. It's Gore on the run. Frank Gore, first down Miami. A pickup of 12 more. That's 11 straight he's hit. Now defensively, what can you do when a team is hot like this? Well, you need you need somebody to make a play, a defensive lineman to come around and knock the ball out of the quarterback's hand from the blind side, or knock the ball loose, or tip it up in the air. That's what Charlie's saying. Somebody make a play. They certainly made him in the first half with tip balls, scooped up fumbles, and now their backs. They're backpedaling a little bit as Gore on the ground. Frank Gore, another first down Miami. Corey Bailey made the stop. Rod Chedzinski, offensive coordinator, doing a nice job of calling the plays, mixing the runs and the screens and the draws and the passes. 12 minutes, 43 seconds remaining in the ball game. In regulation, we should put it that way. It's an eight-point game. First down Miami. Brock Berlin from the shotgun has been red hot. Keeps it on the ground though on the draw play to Gore. And Gore can't get away from Bobby McCray. 12 and a half to play. This has been some kind of all game. Florida scored 23 unanswered points at one stretch. Miami has come back with 15 in this quarter behind Brock Berlin. And now with 12 minutes and 15 seconds remaining, Florida's lead that looked insurmountable at one time is now just an eight-point difference. And Miami's driving again. At the 30-yard line, second down and nine. Berlin, can he keep the streak alive? Yes, he can. First down inside the 20. And it's Ryan Moore. I had another thought. Since Brock Berlin's gone into the shotgun, he hasn't had to have his hands up on that sweaty center's <laughs> butt. He's getting a dry ball back That's there. That's true. That's true. At the 19. Florida led by 23 points with six minutes to play in the third quarter. Their lead's been cut to eight, and Miami's in the red zone again. Parrish, Beard, That's and it. Moss, the wide receiver. And they come after him. These guys are kind of fooling around when they start moving. That shows blitz. Usually here they come. Here they come in full force. Berlin stays in. There's the first incompletion in what? 11 in a row? Yep. 12 in a row. 11 yep. in a row. And that's what good defenses do. They don't give them time. This is all right. I mean, yet if the receiver would have been open, he could have probably scored because you got single coverage and nobody else back there to help the defensive backs. Just on this drive, four for five, 40 yards. You again have to start thinking number 81, the guy that we said the best player on the field in a field full of them. And they have ways to get him single covered. And that's Kellen Winslow we're talking about. He lines up on the right side. Second down and 10 for the Canes. Just inside the Gator 20-yard line. They're coming again. You got that right. But whistles will end this play. Here's a call from Steve Shaw. Dead ball. Delay of game. 
on the offense. Five yard penalty, second down. That's good. Defensively, they, you're getting backed up, backed up. You scored on, do something, change something up, blitz them. Hurried him the last time, delay a game this time. Now, the call probably is a call for a blitz. Now, maybe this time you don't blitz. You fake it and you back out. 22 penalties between the two teams. 58 points between the two teams. No blitz. Berlin, throwback screen to Gore, and he's got blockers in front. Gore inside the 10. First and goal, Miami. Good call. He got Rodriguez and Myers out in front of him, and he just hid behind him down the sideline. Good call. Here it is here. The receiver is going to clear out. The little screen is going to be just up to the top of the screen. Yeah, right there. Look what we got now. We got three in the ball carrier, and there's nothing out here. Good call. Inside the seven yard line, first and goal, Canes. Jared Payton has checked in to give Frank Gore a breather. Winslow set up as an H back, actually in the backfield on the left side. Berlin to throw. Brock over the middle, has got his man, touchdown! Ryan Moore! Six-yard touchdown throw. Unsportsmanlike conduct again on Miami. Brock Berlin having some kind of half. Miami will go for two to tie. A guy who came out to a chorus of boos on the second series of the yeah. third quarter, yeah. and he has lit yeah. the field up. This is going to set him up for the rest of the season. When they look at the tape of this game, the coaches are going to say, you see the first two and a, two and a half quarters, and you see the last half? That's the way you want to play the rest of the year. Now, here's an interesting thing. The unsportsmanlike conduct. Florida has the option to take the penalty or do it on the kick and they took it here because they're not going to give them a two-point conversion chance so yes. now they got to kick a long one point extra point exactly. from 35 yards out so the celebration really hurts in this situation absolutely oh, killed a hole took kick. away a chance to tie instead there's still a point back rock berlin talking now to his defensive captain says mo go get it back for me I want another shot. They'll probably get one. What a half this kid has played. It's 33 to 32. A one point game with 11.08 to play. Here you go. Receiver's going to come across the field. The other guys are going to cross and clear out for him. Ryan Moore. Watch as he comes across the field. Watch how this clears out. Look at him. Nobody around him. He's just going to get into the end zone, and then he gets too excited. And as the young guys do sometimes, you'd think what Devin Hester happened to him, you'd think Ryan Moore would have known better. He did it right in front of the official. The little <laughs> bow cost them the chance to tie the game because of Florida taking the penalty and forcing the long one-point extra point instead of having a chance Moore, for two. Moore and Hester are playing for the first time this, this year. They'll be talked to about it, I'm sure, as the week goes on. From the five. And Caldwell, another good-looking return. Got out across the 30-yard line. McIntosh knocked him up. Appointed by the President of the United States, she is smart, sexy, and lethal. From Danny DeVito and Elmore Leonard comes U.S. Marshal Karen Sisko. Premieres after The Bachelor on Wednesday, October 1st at 10, 9 Central on ABC. I like her. That's going to be a good one. That's going to be a good one. I can just tell. I'm looking at the president, his baby brother's here, the governor, wearing an orange shirt. Smart move, Gov. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you both, can't go wrong there. Both teams' colors. Colors. Well, now we got a new quarterback. And it is not Chris Leak or Ingle Martin. It's Gavin Dickey. 
who did play last week. We didn't really expect that that was going to happen tonight. He threw a touchdown pass last week. So did Lee. So did Martin. And here's his first look at the Miami Hurricanes. I don't, I don't know about this. His eyes are the size of sausage. You can see it right there. <laughs> yeah. And he's going to try to run with it. Out to maybe the 28-yard line. John Vilma made the stop. 10.50 remaining. We're pretty sure now that we're not going to have to worry about overtime because of that extra point. The one-point conversion that made it 33-32. Second down and seven. There's Chris Leak. Ed Zombrecker right there, the offensive coordinator, knows his three quarterbacks and knows their talents. But to send a guy in with what's happened in this ball game, is he sent in Dickey? I don't know. Unless he's a running quarterback and he wants him to run like he did the first time. Talking to all his teammates, they will run it. And here's a nice run by a kid that's had a good night, Deshaun Wynn. He's short of the first down. The first two plays that he has run has been kind of in the option category. Uh -huh. So he, he Zombrecker probably says, let's throw some of this at that defense. Nothing else is working. Martin was right behind Zombrecker. He had his helmet off. Leak still got his chin strap tight, ready to go back in. It has not been a good third down conversion night for the Gators. They're clinging, and I mean clinging, to a one-point lead. Again, Dickey taking all kinds of time. Huge third down for Florida. Here is the option. Again, flags are down. He's got a first down, but yeah. again, penalty markers. He's in there to run the option. The emotions of Ron Zook during this ball game when he was up by 23 points. Unbelievable. And there's so much at stake in this ball game, not just the win. And Ron Zook understands it in terms Outside, of the battle for recruits. The defense, five yard penalty from the previous spot will result you know, in a first one. that has got so much talent. Consider there are 142 players on this field for both teams from the state of Florida. If you recruit the best players in the state, you got a chance to be in the hunt for a national championship every year. Yep. First down at the 38-yard line. Dickey again. Same handoff to Win, and Win has been a tough runner tonight, and he's got another first down. Yeah, that this this new style of offense is throwing the Canes' defense off. You snap it to the quarterback, and it's like an option. Do you give it to him and then run wide, or do you give it to him and let him go? Win not only is fast he showed that with a 65 yard touchdown but he's bigger than Carthon he's about 225 and he bangs his way into Florida uh, rather into hurricane territory at the 49 yard line and win has a hundred yard night on only eight carries this is a no huddle at the line of scrimmage no hurry got nine seconds left first down Florida in Kane territory and Dickey will throw and he zips it to kite ball was blown dead as you see the Hurricanes trying to cover it so he does come up passing and he completes it. Hey Dickey is a red shirt freshman he hasn't played but this year either. The snap was way off but he handled that nicely pulled it off his shoe tops and then fires a dart to kite. Almost 80,000 just under 80,000 looking on in amazement at this ball game. 33 32 Florida. Eight minutes and a little more remaining. Dickey wants to throw again and completes it again to Ben Troop as tight end. <laughs> that's, Maybe his eyes aren't as big as sausage. That, that's good stuff right there. Here's a tight end right here. He just going to take to the inside and then go back out. Little fake. And he, watch his throw. There's a coverage here. If that ball is underthrown at all, Sean Taylor Taylor's it got off. it. Yeah. Third catch for Troop all of this half. First down, Florida. Rand Carthon's back in there. Dickey at the controls. They go right back to that inside play to Carthon. Jonathan Vilma wraps him up. But we're going to work our way under eight minutes at the conclusion. Of tonight's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game. 
Chevrolet will make a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. It's not going to be the easiest of choices for the three of us to. Oh, we got <laughs> Usually, sometimes we're, we're struggling to yeah. find one. We got a bunch of candidates tonight. Second down and eight. Win back in there now. Will they go to the air again with Gavin Dickey? Nope. Option. He'll keep it. Didn't even look to his trail man. Took a pretty good shot. Sean Taylor got up there and popped him along with Barack Atkins. Sean Taylor. He is big. He is strong. He can quick. I'm impressed with Dickey coming in and running this little style offense. Now he's in a situation, though. It's third down and long. Eighth play. They've had the ball over four minutes. And they're going to have to earn this one. Third down and six. Did they play it safe with a quarterback draw or something, or does he put it up? They're not close enough for a field goal yet. Look Drop the ball. Now he's got to run. A lot of orange jerseys giving chase, and they've got it. Uh, you can't run east-west on this defense. Not with Jonathan Vilma and D.J. Williams and those guys. Yeah. Will Fork is the guy that got the penetration. And then Vilma ran him down. Loss of eight. He was going to throw it. He just drops the ball. It wasn't a perfect snap, but it was acceptable. And it took them out of field goal range if they even were in it to start with. And now they've got a punt. The kick to the six-yard line to Antrell Roll. Roll trying to get something rolling here for Miami. Given ground to try to gain some. Going to go down at the 10-yard line. Yeah. Last week, his only punt return in his life was for a touchdown. He was had he had big eyes for another one tonight. Miami needs a field goal to take the lead. They've got 5:43 to work with when we come back. <laughs> 33 to 32, our Pacific Life game summary looks like this: a <laughs> game of runs. I'll tell you that much. Look at this. 30 straight points, and then Miami 32, 22 straight points. And Miami second half, their offense has just lit it up. Can they do it again? They have to start from their own 10-yard line. Brock Berlin against his old team, Florida high snap. He pulls it down and gets it to Frank Gore, and that's only about a yard gain. The high snap may have cost them extra yardage there. Now the defense, John Vilma, DJ Williams and company, forced that last punt. These, these things that, that you expect to be normal. Never automatic. Oh, boy, that, boy, he did a good job pulling that thing down. Second down. Berlin waits, fires. Beard's got another one. And he's still on his feet to the 36-yard line. Big play gets him out of the shadow of their own end zone. Rod Zook says, calm down, Just guys. Take it easy. Just take it easy. Five minutes left. A 25-yard pickup. Here you go right here. He's just going to come down the middle of the field. Good protection allows him to wait until Beard uncovers. And whistle stop play. Butler, I think the right tackle might have pulled up. And that'll cost the Canes five. The first half of story. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. Of turnovers and missed opportunities and drop passes. And Kevin Beard, two for 21. It did look like he could catch an elephant in a phone booth in the first half. And look at what he's done in the second <laughs> half. He's got seven catches, 164 yards. And the quarterback, 14, 15 of 17. For 225 yards and two touchdowns. Now the pleading from the Florida fans for their defense. And they look at a familiar face in an unfamiliar helmet in Brock Berlin. Berlin with time. Fires complete. 
It's Moss in the open field, and he's inside the 45-yard line. A pickup of 26 more, and Santana Moss's little brother this lights a, up the crowd. A tough throw over a linebacker, way to the sideline. You know, early in the game, he wasn't making this throw, but he's making all of them now. At the 43, first and 10 Miami. We approach four minutes. They need a field goal to lead in the game. Rock Berlin taking his time back to the quick draw. Core inside the 40 to the 39. We've had a triple header day that's been full of excitement, and we got another one coming up next week. Next Saturday, join ABC. Terrific college football triple header. Noon Eastern, Ohio State, the defending national champs, take on NC State or Arkansas and Texas. And our spotlight game is Notre Dame and Michigan. At 8 o'clock, we'll be in Nebraska for Penn State. Georgia Tech meets Florida State in the ACC or Illinois and UCLA. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Georgia Tech shocking Auburn today. So that'll be a handful for Florida State, or it would so appear. Second down and six. Blitz. Comes a blitz again. Berlin pulls down the high snap, goes behind his intended receiver. Moss again. Matt Jackson was covering. And everybody just takes a big, deep breath with play finally slowed a moment here with 3.11 left and a huge third down coming up. I wouldn't. You mentioned getting in the field goal range. For those of you who just joined us or may not have heard, Miami's field goal kicker is a, is a redshirt freshman. Yeah. This is the first year he's kicking. I wouldn't put it on him if I could get it in the end zone. Question here, is this two down territory or do you put it back on your defense and punt it away if you don't get this third and six? We got some questions we're going to answer here in about eight seconds. They got nobody back here deep. You would think they're going to come on a blitz. And now, Kellen Winslow, I don't know if he was intended receiver, but boy, did he come out of the blocks. He got a head start going. Miami is used to overcoming uh, penalty yardage. Yep, they seem to be way up there every year. The penalty. Dead ball, offside on the defense. The defense was in the neutral zone, causing the offense to move. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Is against the Florida Gators. It gives a free five yards to Miami. It's still not a first down. It's third down at a couple. I want to welcome those of you that have been watching BYU and USC. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan in a strange game that has been nothing short of unbelievable. It's 33 to 32. Florida had a huge lead. Miami came back and just took over and put 22 unanswered points on the board. Now they're trying to drive for the lead or the win. Third and a yard. Draw play. Can it work again? Nope. They've gone to it one too many times, I think. That was a tough call because third and two, you may try and run. Now, now what do you do? That's it. That's the question I said we'd have answered because it's fourth down and it's almost two yards left. Before the penalty, when it was third and seven, you knew they were going to throw. Yeah. And they're going to take a timeout. Two minutes and 52 seconds remaining in the ball game. Big decision when we come back. Our BCS Spotlight game presented by ADT could not be shining on a better one. 252 remaining. It's 33 to 32 Florida. Here's the situation. There's fourth down and almost two to go just outside the 34 yard line of Florida for the Canes. That's John Petty. He's the young kicker. His career long is 32 yards. He's got his chin strap on as if he wants a shot at it, but he's not even part of the huddle. Now they're not going to kick it. They're going to go out. Probably going to probably going to throw the football. This wouldn't be a bad place to give it over. If you have to get over, the, the referee has marked it ready for play. Fourth down, the biggest play of the ball game. Brock Berlin, play action, he rolls. He's gonna run it, he's got the first down. He's done it with his arm the whole game. 
Now he does it with his legs, and he's trying not to cramp up. Yeah, he looks like he may be cramping. Good call. And they don't want to bring him out, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, you may, you may have to take a time out here. Derek Crudup looking on. They might have to bring him in here just to give Brock Berlin a chance they, to try to get that kink out of his calf. Canes have two timeouts left. And Brock Berlin limps off. And he goes down, and that's the scene of a cramp, you can bet. Hot, it hot. is a hot, muggy night. Crudup is starting to warm up now and has come out. How ironic, Brad and Bob, that uh, Brock Berlin cramps up and might need something that the floor of the program invented. <laughs> That's right. Gatorade. That's right. <laughs> well, he used to be a Gator. And they're going to work on that cramp. We've got a timeout with 2.38 remaining. The cramp heard round college football has hit Brock Berlin after that scramble. And you can see Eric Winston said, I'm working on it for you, buddy. <laughs> His left tackle. He stays in after the timeout taken by Miami. He's been the engineer of the comeback of comebacks for the Canes. Can they continue to come back and win this game when it looked like they were dead in the water? Here's the throw. It's complete to his fullback, Cobia, and it's first down, Miami. Another 11-yard pickup. Kobia's first catch of the day. Nice call, Rod Chubzinski. Fullback's just going to slide out here in the flat. I like the call. You lined up tight. You thought run. Little play action. Slide the fullback out in the flat. As we approach two minutes, first down, Hurricanes. I would and not, the linesman blows his whistle. Yeah, I would not, I would not play too safe to put this on my kicker. As well, a, he was a freshman, redshirt freshman kicker that's kicking for the first time this year. First down at the 18-yard line. Berlin under center. Winslow on the move, handoff inside, Gore, Frank Gore down near the 12-yard line. Dwight Jackson made the stop. And now, we might have Florida to take Zook, it up. Yeah, Zook wants timeout. to take some time to save some time. And Florida has three timeouts, now they have two remaining. Two minutes and two seconds remaining. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Budweiser. Grab a cold, fresh Budweiser. It is game time. Chevy Silverado, it's the right truck. And Taco Bell, think outside the bun. Brock Berlin in this half has been hotter than a taco with extra sauce. And can he lead his new team, a team that he sat out a year ago, waited for Kenny Dorsey to graduate and go to the San Francisco 49ers. He left Florida because Rex Grossman, he said, was extraordinary. He said it was nothing against the folks in Gainesville. I got a lot of friends there. I still got a lot of friends wearing those white jerseys on the other side. It was just a business decision. I wanted to play. I thought I could play here. Well, Zook, Zook says if I could have called him, I called him. I wanted him to stay, but his mother wouldn't let me talk to him. <laughs> he says if I could have talked to Brock, I think he would have stayed. And this, this is what every kid in every parking lot, playground, ever fantasized and dreamed about. To lead a team down the field, to imagine, fa you know, fantasize about the plays he called to get in position. Brock Berlin might live it in a few minutes. He has hit 17 of his last 19 passes. Second down and five. He's hit 18 of his last 20. But Winslow gets very, very little on that catch. Yeah, that was a, that was a very cautious throw and catch. And now Winslow a little shaken up. And he waves off the trainers as if to say, I'm not going anywhere. A timeout again with 151 remaining. There's the first half. And then in the third quarter, following one of the interceptions, Bob and I even kind of questioned, do you go 
with Derek Crudup and try to change things up into a chorus of boos, and I mean a lot of them yeah. from his hometown fans. Brock Berlin came back out and went seven for eight on a drive that went in a hurry, found Kevin Beard for a touchdown, then Beard on a crossing pattern got 62. That set up Gore from just a yard out, and Brock Berlin has ignited this crowd and this stadium and his teammates, and he's still one point down with 151 left. You think we don't have some pretty good football? We had a triple header today. We had a great Jets Redskins game on Thursday night and Monday night. We'll do it again. Al John and Lisa will be in Philly for a rematch of last year's NFC championship game. It'll be the defending champion Bucks against Donovan McNabb and the Eagles Monday night nine Eastern six Pacific right here on ABC. And let me tell you the Bucks are not too excited about being the defending champions and not being able to open at home. So they're going to be a little surly. Well, they As said Warren they couldn't. Sapp told Swanee earlier. Yeah, they said Tampa Bay couldn't win in cold weather. Last year in the playoffs, they went up to Philadelphia and just knocked their socks off. I think Philadelphia might be laying in wait for them this year. Hey, Bob and Brad, just to let you know what just happened on the field, the timeout was called. The timeout was over. The play clock started to run. The coaches looked up and saw the play clock was down to about 13 or 12 seconds. And now they've burned another timeout. So Miami did. Miami yeah. did. Yeah. Florida's was first. Miami's was second. And Miami's out of them now. Which means it's third and five. If Miami doesn't make this, they got to run their field goal team on. They can't take a timeout to do it. So there's the young guy that could have the weight of the world on his shoulders here in a minute. Grow up in a hurry in situations like this. The you know, Canes took over at their own 11 yard line with 543 remaining. Now they're in the 11th play of their drive, and can they keep the streaks alive? It sure didn't look like that was going to happen early in the third quarter, I'll tell you that much. Well, third down and five. Berlin's only missed two of his last 20 passes. Does he put it up here? Do they play it safe and try to square it in front of the goalposts? For the young kicker. We're about to find out. Gore heading for the first down, and he's got it. It's a touchdown. Hurricane warning. 38 33. you and I say about three hours ago 38 36 would be kind of fun <laughs> yeah Jeez. I thought she'd been uh, been drinking or something <laughs> two point conversion will be coming up the attempt anyway the Gators had the canes in their jaws and they opened their mouth or this guy did these two teams it's a shame you know you really can't call it a rivalry although it is but they don't play every year it's a shame they're not going to play again until 2008 at a neutral site largest comeback since 98 17 point deficit against UCLA that was the year UCLA looked like they were BCS bound and we're going to just roll through everybody this is a grand old building and I've seen some some wild games and some wild things happen. You remember going all the way back to the Super Bowl when Namath guaranteed, guaranteed the victory on the Colts and he how about, delivered. How about the Hail Mary pass from Doug Flutie? That happened on this field. That's right. Two point conversion attempt upcoming. Jared Payton's in the backfield. Flags are all over the place again. He's complete. But again, penalty markers down. Ryan Moore's got the pass. Let's see. Are they going to bring it back? It's a legal procedure on Miami. So hold the phone. Like I said, Miami, the most penalized team in the Big East last year and the eighth most penalized team in the nation. And it uh, looks like they're off to another good start. 
offense, five yard penalty. Repeat the try. They got to keep trying because they want to make it a seven point spread because there's a lot of time left. 39 doesn't do them much good. So now the two point try comes from outside the 13 yard line. They're going the wrong direction here. Berlin now will work from the gun. He's got trips to his right side. And he comes back the other way to Winslow. He's got it. Nope. He had it and dropped it. He had what he wanted. Kellen will tell you that. Just throw it up there and I'll get it. Wait a minute. Another penalty marker down. Pretty well after the play. I thought. Actually, it's at the line of scrimmage, so maybe it was dropped earlier. Florida running off as if it's against the Canes. Yeah. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike against Miami, removing their helmets on the field. That penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Wow, when do you learn? Too many players on the field, did he say? No, taking a helmet off, unsportsmanlike oh, okay. conduct. Taking again. a field off. Taking a helmet off on the field. Yep. That's happened more than once. That's going to push Miami back. Sixteen penalties, a couple of them killers because they've set up Gator points. And this could be the same situation now because the Canes are going to have to kick off from their own 20-yard line. Even if they get a decent deep kick, somebody's going to field it around the 15. And with any kind of run back, Florida's going to be in the 30, 35-yard line range, and they still got plenty of time to work with. And they need a touchdown, not a field goal. Right. Here's a look at the touchdown, Frank Gore. Cut back inside, got through Dixon, and just, got to the end zone. Yeah, he just doesn't, you just can't tackle him. And Unless here's one that could have been, because Winslow usually just sucks these things right in. Well, he's 6'5", and Lamar does a great job. Yeah, he, he says, did. all right, I can't get up that high, but before you come down, I'm going to strip the ball out of you, and he did. Andre Caldwell and Reggie Lewis will be the deep return men. It looks like Chris Leak will be the man. At least he's licking his fingers as if it's going to be his ball game to finish. And there's his offensive coordinator. Brian Monroe will kick, but again, he has to do it from the 20 because of the big, big penalty. So how good will Florida's field position be? We'll find out in just seconds. That kick will sail to the 17. Lewis, oh, did he take a shot at the 30? Leon Williams said hello. So they're 70 yards away. Field goal does them no good. 137 left, and they've got one timeout. That's the ball game. Are they sending out the true freshman? Is it Chris Leak? Yeah, that's him. Just outside the 30. So here's the 18 year old from Charlotte, North Carolina. Wake Forest offered him a scholarship when he was in eighth grade because his big brother CJ was going to go to Wake. He's since transferred to Tennessee. And now here's the freshman trying to lead Florida to a come from behind win when they had a huge lead earlier. Leak fires sideline, got his man. What a strike to Dallas Baker. And now they hustle up. They'll move the chains. The clock will stop momentarily. Pick up a 21. One timeout left for Florida. They're already in hurricane territory. Plenty of time. In college football, remember the clock stops when you make a first down. And then when the official marks it ready for play, it starts again. And there it just did. They're at the 49 of Miami. Chris Leak's never thrown an interception either in his college career. He's completed another one. And that's good for five more. This time, Kelvin Kite. Florida trying to drive to a win. Thirty-eight, thirty-three. Now it's Miami trying to cling to their lead. A minute to go. Leak in trouble. Trying to scramble out of it. Heading for the first down sticks. He didn't quite get there. He didn't get it, and he didn't get out of bounds. So the clock runs. And it's under 50 seconds, and it's going to be third down and a yard. 
He has to hustle his troops up to try to pick up the first down. They've got one timeout left, 40 seconds, clock winding. Leak trying to line his troops at the 40. He needs to get to the 39. Last Max time he had a quarterback sneak, he got popped. And he got popped again. I don't know. If the linesman is going to spot it where he has his foot right now, I think he's got it by about eight inches. Sit but let's wait and see. Well, he's sitting it right on a yellow line, which is just an estimate and not finite. The finite will be coming from the sideline. Yeah. So the biggest measurement of the night about to occur. Got it. First down Gators. Under 30 seconds. Now what Chris Leak needs to realize is just because you made a first down, the clock only stops until the official marks are ready for play. So you need to be up there ready to go. He's got him up there. Steve Shaw, the referee, trying to get out of the way. There you see the wine Bob's talking about from the gun. Four wide outs for Leak. Crowd deafening for the Canes defense. Streak down the sideline again, and he got Baker again. Same play as earlier. First down, 19-yard pickup. Baker is 6-3 going down the sideline, and you're right, twice they hit it. That's Marshall, who is 6-1. He just needs to make a play on it. Right at the 20-yard line with 15 seconds left. Remember, they have one timeout left. They need a touchdown. Chris Leak. And this time he's intercepted. Miami will survive it. The ball is still loose. Alfonso Marshall picked it off. It's been blown dead. And the Canes dodge a huge bullet. I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, Chris Leak had never thrown a collegiate interception. He just made his first mistake. It's just tough to ask a true freshman to do what they wanted him to do. He can make some plays, but you're going to have some problems, too, up here. Because he did it the other two times, he thought he could do it again. And that was probably wrong. He probably should have gone somewhere else because Marshall is a fifth-year senior, and he, he knows you're coming back. Chris Leak's going to be one heck of a player. Yes, he is. But he's got a lot of growing pains to go through, and this is one of them. Meanwhile, the last snap of the ball game, the ball will be in an ex-Gator's hands. Brock Berlin throws it a mile in the air, and the once, once a Gator, always a hurricane in the case of number seven. Wow, what a ball game. And look at, there's the buddies, there's his old roommate. Yep. And that's not the only hug you'll get from the Florida players. As you can see right there, Rand Carthon's part of the group as well. There'll be better days, you can bet, for Chris Leak. There weren't many better days than the second half we just saw from Miami. Let's go down to Swanee. Brock, every kid in every park fantasizes and dreams about being in the shoes you were in tonight. You had what, by all standards, a miserable first half. What happened in the second half to turn this around? I'll tell you what, man. First of all, I just want to thank God. You know, God brought me through this. I asked God to give me a piece the second half, and he really did. He gave me a piece, and I felt good. I let my teammates play. My teammates played unbelievable. I couldn't have done any of this without them. They're unbelievable teammates, and it was a great victory. He gave you more than a piece. He gave you a rock or a boulder. Let me ask you about your mindset. One play in the second half, you throw it directly to a Florida player. I mean, they had to take a little something out of you at that point. Yeah, it was tough, you know, but I knew that you just got to keep fighting, you know. It's not always going to go that way. Go your way, you know, and I didn't want to let my teammates say I was down. I just said, hey, we're going to get it back, and we did. We came back and fought, and I'm proud of my teammates. Larry Coker came over and talked to you when you were on the bench after that. What did he say to you? He just said, let's go, baby. You got to do this thing. He said, hey, we got him. We're all right. Stay calm. Let's do it. He was on your side the whole time. That's right. Rock, congratulations. Brad? Rock, Rock, Rock Berlin. Last week, his first start in his hometown, he won. His his first start in a cane uniform tonight in Miami, he won. His girlfriend's Miss Louisiana tonight, he's Mr. Miami. 
38-33, our final score. And I wonder who our Chevy players of the game are. Brock Berlin, what a second half. Deshaun went over 100 yards on the ground, including a big touchdown for the Florida Gators. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Florida looking on, shocked. They had Miami right where they wanted them. They let them off the hook. And it's 23 straight for the Canes at home. They started with a blast. They finished with a flash. They win it 38-33. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Keyword ABC Sports. Tomorrow at 2 Eastern, IRL IndyCar Racing at the Delphi Indy 300 from Chicagoland Raceway. Then at 4 o'clock, America's best amateur golfers compete in the Walker Cup. Final score in a thriller, 38-33 Miami. For Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew, Brad Nessler from Dade County in South Florida. Good night.